Indians and what we yeah. can expect for the season. That's who I that's yeah. who I want to see. Well, let's get this started. Let's bring in Jim, our first guest here. Uh, on opening day, if my teeth chatter, it's because it's 35 degrees. Right, I'm you not guys, nervous. wear your gloves, <laughs> wear your winter coats. Welcome. <laughs> Hi, Thank Jim. You. Hello, hello. Wow. <laughs> All right, so uh, tribe opening day. We've been through this several other times before. Well, this is this ballpark's 25th. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, and and re- every year sold out. Every year sold out. Um, and I remember the first one, yeah. which was unbelievable. When, they, when it opened up, the city was so excited because it was then Jacobs Field, mm-hmm. and it was a spectacular day against the Seattle Mariners. But there's a great story connected to it because as the game progressed, the Indians were getting no hit in the game by Randy Johnson, the big unit. Bob Feller was sitting in the press box, and there's only been one pitcher in Major League history who has thrown a no-hitter on opening day, and it was Bob Feller. And as he sat in the press box and the innings ticked off, and I don't think the Indians got a hit till like the seventh inning when Sandy Alomar got a hit, Bob Feller was really very vocal about the fact he did not want to lose his record. He did not want to share his record. The Indians finally got a hit, and then Wayne Kirby got a big hit in the 11th inning, and they won the game, and... That kind of started the magic of mm-hmm. this of this ballpark. Mm-hmm. And the Indians really soaked up that magic for a lot of years. Yeah. When you look back on the past 25 years, is that first opening day what stands out to you most? Yeah, there are two that stand out. Number one is that one because, uh, you know, Ben, it was such a, such a renaissance of baseball. I mean, it was perfect timing, too, because not only were you getting a brand-new ballpark, but the other factor was the Indians were getting real good right at the right time. All of these young players, Bayerga, Vizquel came here, Albert Bell was here, Ramirez was here. So you had all these young players and they were, it just hit at the perfect time. So you had the sellouts and, and the day was just glorious. I mean, the president was here I mean, it was amazing. The other one was uh, on, a, on a completely different scale. And that was 2007, and I was doing the game on Channel 3, and that was the blizzard day. That's right. And that was unbelievable (laughs) because what happened yesterday, you know, around the area, the snow, that happened that day uh, where the snow just blew in over the lake, and it continued, and the Indians were hell-bent that they were going to play the game. Right. And it was against uh, it was against Seattle again yeah. uh, because Mike Hargrove was managing the Mariners at the time. And it was just that it was amazing. And the Indians would not give up the ghost, so to speak, and say, hey, listen, we got to cancel the game. Yeah. So what they're doing right now and shoveling off the field, they did that like five times yeah. Yeah. during the game. <laughs> so the game was that. supposed to start at like 4 o'clock. It didn't start till like 6. And we stayed on the air the entire day. And the Indians are one strike away from finally winning the game when Mike Hargrove comes out of the dugout and says, my batters can't see because the snow was coming down. Paul yeah. Bird was pitching a no-hitter right. for the Indians. <laughs> and the game got wiped out, yeah. and the Indians were furious. Uh, Eric Wedge was just furious that the Indians even played the game. Yeah. And then the Indians had to leave Cleveland because it snowed all weekend. Yeah. I mean, every day they kept saying, all right, we're going to try it again tomorrow. And then I think it was Easter Sunday. We're going to try it on Easter Sunday. But the snow kept coming, and so they had to go to Milwaukee oh and gosh, play their opening that. home series, sort of, yeah. in, 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 uh, in, in Milwaukee Stadium. <laughs> and it was Miller Field, and it was just unbelievable. So those are the two that stick yeah. out. Yeah, those are memorable. So looking forward to today, are we going to have a magical opening day? What do you think about the team right now? How is it shaping up? So the team right now is kind of incomplete. Um, it's tough to judge them right now, and I think it's probably it, you got to hang on until it's all put together. And by that, I mean I mean there's no Francisco Lindor, and today's a big day, uh, Lindor, and it's not here in Cleveland. Today's a big day up in Green Bay, Wisconsin, because Lindor has gone to a foot specialist, an ankle specialist, to get a second opinion on that injury that he sustained in that minor league game just before he was scheduled to leave Arizona. So he's getting checked there. You know, the Indians are, fingers crossed, hoping that that's okay and that it's not going to linger the entire year. Hopefully it's just precautionary. But with him not being in the lineup, Jason Kipnis is not in the lineup Mm -hmm. because he's injured. And I don't think Jose Ramirez is right after banging that ball off his knee. I think it's tough to judge how the Indians are going to be early in the year. Until those guys get back and up to speed and we see them play day in and day out, it gets a little bit warmer here then I think you're going to know, at least offensively, what they're going to have. The consistent thing is, which should get them through, is their starting pitching is amazing. Yeah. And be- because of that starting pitching, though, they're still the favorites in the AL yeah. Central. What are your 
obviously they're still in wait and see mode. I think that's where everybody right. is right now. But your broad thoughts on the rest of the season. I think it's a really interesting season, Ben, and I'll tell you why. There are a couple of ways to do it in baseball. You either go for it, you're all in, and you're a buyer come July in the trading deadline, and you fix whatever problem you have or deficiency you have, and you make a big trade. And the Indians have done that the last couple of years when they've really gone for it. Or there's another way to do it, and you become a seller in July. You sell off assets, and you realize we're not going to get it done with this group, so we kind of go and retool, we rebuild, which is an ugly word, but we rebuild. I think the Indians have an opportunity, hear me out on this, to do both. I think they can contend because they know the division is well within their reach with that pitching. And then while they're doing that, I wouldn't be surprised if they retool huh. on the go, which is really unique. You know, the Indians have been a little bit ahead of the, you know, Moneyball really started with the Indians. Right. Yeah. But um, I, I'm kind of wondering what they do. I think July will be a really big month. All-star yeah. game, yeah. trading deadline, Browns open up training camp. Yep. I yeah. mean, really. And, and how, you know, the distraction for the Indians of the Browns being so relevant now is going to be uh, some, a factor for them. Yeah. Yeah. So you're going to be busy in July. Be and we're going to be in July, yeah, yeah. To and warmer. To I'm going to be warmer <laughs> yes, in July, hopefully, too. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully. All right, Jim, thanks so much. All right, and we'll, thank we'll be you. talking to you throughout the show in the uh, special, of course. So uh, a lot of people come here not only to see baseball. Right. This is this is a destination for thousands of people who are coming downtown today because of the tradition of the food and yeah. the drinks here, right? Do oh, you yeah. Have, do you have a favorite ballpark eats? I'm pretty basic. I like the hot dog with the mall the ballpark mustard, yeah. a light beer. Uh, just keep it simple. What about you? Oh, I'm, I must be a fancy pants because I'm <laughs> loving how a lot of these restaurants, our unique restaurants, are opening right. up stations throughout the ballpark. And there are going to be a few new ones here. Dante, if you're familiar with Dante, there's Pasta El Dante that's opening up uh new this year mm -hmm. so that'll be a good one but uh, but those restaurants it's always good to just come here you know especially in the summer we're thinking forward to the hot days where you're able to just sit with an ice cream and cold beer and yeah. And calories don't count that day. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Cheat day. <laughs> yeah. But that's, I think, one thing that's been cool. We're going to talk a lot about the 25 years of Jacobs Field and Progressive Field. But that's one thing that's been cool is to see the way it's kind of evolved in the way mm -hmm. they've brought in these restaurants and, and upgraded the food. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think we're going to have a guest here in a minute, Fatar yep. Thomas, to talk about some of the upgrades to the food. Yes, Chef Thomas. Uh, oh, oh, nope. No, we're we going to go the other Sharon way and welcome Brown. in Senator, Senator Sharon, Sharon Brown. Brown. Hi. <laughs> Come on right I'm next here. to me. Good to have have you here? Dressed like it's cold. <laughs> hey, man, it's never cold. Never, never, never. never. You they... old enough, but the old stadium was way colder than this. Yeah. So. Yeah. You know what? Always. I was there. I was there, and it was a long time ago. But and I don't remember what the temperature the, the was. View, you could see the the horseshoe opened out towards the water, and you could see the ice cubes <laughs> floating in Lake Erie in early April, yeah. and the wind blowing across yeah. the ice cubes. Yeah. So. I love the story that you told. You you put a story out there on Twitter about, about my dad, about your dad and yeah. opening day. Yeah. Can you tell sure, everybody sure. watching? I here? was in grade school, fifth, sixth grade. My dad's my principal at Brinkerhoff School in Mansfield was a friend of my dad's, and he was going to take us to the opener on Monday. So he had me take a note to the principal. Said, "Dear Mr. Sheets, um, Sherrod's grandmother died. He's going to the funeral on Monday in Cleveland." And I handed him the note, and he said, Sherrod, what time's the game start? <laughs> and I thought, how did he know that? Yeah. But I think it's the same note he used for my brothers every year. Oh, uh, so. yeah. Were you wearing, like, a, an Indian's baseball well, cap just, or something Probably not that at day school. No. I don't, right. I don't yeah. think we could do that in those days. But, yeah. but I went to a lot of I mean, I don't know. that We didn't go to the opener every year, but got to see the end. Got to see a lot of Sunday doubleheaders growing yeah. up. Back Lately, have those. you been coming to the openers yeah, yeah. every year? Uh, no, I come, I, like today I've got to fly back to Washington in a couple so hours, so I can't. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm not going today, but I'll, I'll be at a lot of games. And, yeah. and um, But uh, openers, when they open on Friday and we're not in session, I get to go. So yeah. anyway. What is it about the energy around here and the excitement on the opener that, that makes it so special? Yeah. Um, this, I mean, it's a, it's a, Cleveland's a football town in many ways, but yeah, there's just something about the opener and something about the Indians. And, you know, they've been good now for off and on for 25 years when mm -hmm. I was growing up, they were not ever on. They were always off. And mm -hmm. um, it's just that, you know, people think we're going to win the Central, and I think we are. They've got to get better hitting. Um, they've got the best pitching in baseball, and, and that can take them a long way. 
not just the season, but the playoffs. So I think people are pretty excited. Yeah, we have the All-Star game here in July. Yep. And the other day it'll we were warmer. talking about it will be, be warmer. <laughs> We've been promising at least it'll be warmer. But all of the money, I think it's projected to be $65 million brought into our local yeah. economy because of that. I mean, what does that mean for us as a region? Well, it's, it's, a, it's a big deal that way. But it's also it's also people will see Cleveland. And every, every time for the Republican convention in 16, I still hear people say, how, how surprised they were and how much they, they love Cleveland from coming here. And I mean, I, a guy said to me once, uh, this guy is actually mayor of Milwaukee, and he said, Cleveland and Milwaukee have this in common. People, when they find out they're transferred, they're moving here, they're not always excited. But once they're here, they don't want to leave. Yeah. And I think, I think that bringing people in for any major event, I mean, the dollar figures, I think they always inflate those dollars, whoever's doing it. But <laughs> but it's always good exposure, and people love the city when they see it. Yeah. This is 25 years of Progressive Field. Uh, do you have a favorite memory in the stadium? Uh, favorite memory was the two-run homer in the, All-Star, in the World Series, clearly. Mm -hmm. And to watch all those, there were so many Cubs fans here, as you remember. Yeah. And, and my wife and I were sitting way out, and my kids way, way out in left field. I'm kind of under the – you couldn't see the home run. You just saw the hit. And then you saw the Indians' third base dugout jump up, and you knew what had happened. But there were so many rich people from Chicago that <laughs> flew their private planes. They were. They flew their private planes into Burke Lakefront. And, I mean, we paid, Connie and I paid, two, we paid face value, $250 for our tickets and for each of our kids. And, you know, we could have sold them for, for some rich Chicago guy for two or 3000 and we didn't because we wanted to be there, and we didn't want them to be there. Right. Yeah. But all the Cubs fans just, like, went into this deep depression. But, yeah. unfortunately, oh, well. Yeah. But then, then, you know, the rain delay and then the world went to hell because the Indians right. lost and Donald Trump got elected all in the same week and that was pretty awful. So you Sorry have, to make it political, <laughs> but resist. Those, those things happen together. <laughs> right. Well, you, this was such a part of your growing up and you and yeah. Connie have grandkids yeah. now. Yeah. Uh, I heard you say yeah. you, they haven't been here yeah, to too, a game too yet? Yeah, too young. We, we've taken, four of them live in Columbus. Um, uh -huh. Three live out of state. Um, but the four in Columbus we have taken to a Clippers game, but they're just too young and I mean yeah. they're, they're all under six and might, might as well spend ten dollars at a Clippers game rather than twenty five here if they're going to get bored by the fourth inning anyway. Yeah. But, you know, you, there is something. I mean, you take them to a minor league game, go to Akron, or and I've taken them to Akron too. You, you, um, you don't feel bad leaving in the fourth inning because yeah. you didn't pay much. But right. It's hard to leave a game. Yeah. So, so it we figure hard. by the time they're seven or eight, we'll have them start going to games here. Yeah. But before that, seeing minor league ball is good, and they get to see some of the players coming up. Mm -hmm. It's a nice stadium down there There's in Columbus such a, too. Yeah. Yeah. Akron's a great stadium, and the Lake County here stadium's nice. I mean the Minor league stadiums are really nice. Yeah. yeah. Are you going to be able to stay for any of this game no, today? No, I'm, I'm, no, I'm flying back about two o'clock. Do you so. get it? Do you get to listen at least to, um, to the game, or are you? Gonna yeah, oh, yeah I watch some of it online. We'll yeah. see. I mean, I'm going to be on a plane and then got work to yeah. do, but yeah, there'll, there'll be other games and the weather will get warmer and just. But good yeah. memories always of opening day and 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 just any of the games in in the old park and this one too, of right. course. Right. And my dad, my dad tells a story when my dad was born in 1911. And he went to a game at Lee. He used to go to games at League Park. Uh -huh. It's still standing on Lex and 42nd, yes. I think. Put Lex and Six Foot, Lex, whatever it is. There's signs up. Yeah, yeah and, we've and, had signs. He, he, he remembers seeing Cy Young in the stands watching oh a game at amazing. the old League Park. So he yeah. got to go to, my dad got to go to World Series in League Park in 1920, a World Series in Municipal Stadium in 48, and then I got to take him to the 95 oh, Series in this that's park. Great. So that that's was pretty great. cool. Well, we'll hope that this year is another one, too. Senator, thank you All so right, much. We'll do it again. Thank you. All right. Yeah, good to Enjoy. see you. Joy, thanks. Thanks for having me. Stay warm. And uh, good luck going back to D.C. <laughs> I wish you could stay with us here and, and oh, catch the game. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, yeah. So what do you think, Ben? You're, you're plugged into sports. Do you think yeah. we're going to see um, you're going to see a World Series here this season, maybe next season? We always talk about it. As, you know, we're building. We're building a team. Right. What do you think? I think it's so tough to project what baseball is going to look like six months from now, what, what this roster is going to look like, what other teams are going to look like. But I think the good thing is they're the favorites to win the division, which means they're favored to get to the playoffs. And as we saw in 2016, once you get to the playoffs, anything can happen. So as long as they can get there, as long as we can get some games in October out here in Cleveland, that's all you can really ask for, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. But we are going to welcome in Russ Mitchell. I know it's not St. Louis, but... Happy opening hey, day. Hey, hey, hey. hey, it's all good. Hey, hey, it's all good. He's one of us now. Oh, he's being a tribe I'm, fan, I'm, I'm right? Well, you can have an exactly. AL team and an NL team, right? That's the way I spin it, Ben. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. No, in fact, a couple years ago, they did the interleague play, and the Cardinals were here. Mm -hmm. 
and I wore a St. Louis Browns t-shirt, but nobody caught the St. Louis part, so they thought, oh, they thought it was go. Browns. But no, I'm, I'm, opening day is so much fun. I mean, something magical about opening day, home opener, wherever you are. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, now that I'm one of you, yes, it's great to be here. I know, here. right. Yeah. Wait, so how many is this for you? This Five? is seven. Se seven? Yeah, seven. Oh. Actually, this is eight. This is my eighth opening day. What? Where did the time go? I, I know. just met you. I um, so. <laughs> oh, I've known you, you for that long? A... My goodness. <laughs> I know, Jeez. right? Um, do you have a favorite? Yeah, I, my, my first opening day here, certainly. Yeah. I mean, I, again, opening day, just a magical day anyway. And seeing how the Indians did it, do it, was just incredible. It was something that we were up in, I guess, a booth over there, and they had us wear Indians garb that day. So my St. Louis friends on social media did give me a hard time. <laughs> However, it was just fun to watch. I think Monica Robbins actually sang the national anthem that day, and we yeah. were playing the Blue Jays, so she sang Oh Canada as well. And you just walking around the stadium afterward, you just got a really great sense of this community and how much the Indians, how much baseball mm -hmm. means to Cleveland. So, yeah, I, my first one, probably the best, and maybe today will be the best. Yeah. yeah well, we were talking earlier about the All-Star Game coming mm -hmm. here, and just it mm -hmm. kind of brings back that energy of, of even 2016 with the RNC here and mm -hmm. stuff going on in downtown Cleveland. I mean, that's something that everybody here is really looking forward to as far as yeah. the All-Star game. Totally. I mean, th things like that and things like uh, the RNC, it, it lets the rest of the country see Cleveland in kind of a cinematic view as opposed to a snapshot, you know, uh, a news story or, or something going on there. When you have events like that and people come to town for several days, and they see everything that Cleveland has to offer. It really means a lot. It's interesting when the, during the convention, uh, the, the the Republicans were here, of course. The Democrats were in Philadelphia the next week, and I went to both. Uh, I know you guys were you know here as, as well. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting in Philadelphia, a lot of the folks who were here, the media people, and 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 some of the the, the support staff said, you know what, Cleveland did a fantastic job. We wish we could go back to Cleveland. In fact, they liked they liked their experience in Cleveland more than they liked in Philadelphia. That's wow. great. So, it, so it really does it means something when you can get people to town, come to town, and show them all the good stuff we have to offer. Yeah, and you know that we we've run the drill before with the RNC, so mm -hmm. we can just tee that up and play play a good host. I'm sure that that's oh uh, yeah, no that exactly was one of the thoughts behind it. Do you um, looking forward to this season when you come to Progressive Field? Uh huh. Are you one of those? that you watch the whole game or are you here mm. as the uh for the entertainment value do you in the right field up, district right yeah. Yeah. do you hit uh, up oh, the, well not, uh, i'm not yeah. even accusing him of drinking yeah, but like the, the restaurants and, uh, <laughs> and you know do you go come you know, here for the good eats you, and the, and you the know, atmosphere as ben knows my nickname is mr party <laughs> <laughs> so, so when i come when I, when, I, when I come to the game it's this i mean it's just one after another who's buying you know no no i i, I enjoy i a pastoral afternoon no, at, at, I at the ballpark. More the food. Well, I, I, like, know, I, I, I know. No, I, I, I enjoy coming to the game and watching yeah. the game. No, you know, it's it, the atmosphere and what they, you know, they do with the games now. I mean, the, obviously the game was in the field, but these teams, especially the Indians, have become so great in expanding the show. Mm -hmm. So there's all sorts of stuff going on, oh, pregame yeah. and all that kind of stuff. So I, I enjoy the whole thing. But no, you're, you're probably not going to catch me. <laughs> or, but then I'm on West 6th afterward, uh, Maureen. So, uh, well, yeah. you just call me yeah. if you need a ride. I'll be no, in the DD. I'll no, pick you up. No, wor no, Uber. no worries whatsoever. Right. But, but no, it, it, it's just it's a lot of fun just coming to the games. And I mean, you know, like the crack of the bat, the smell. Yes. I don't think we're going to smell any fresh cut grass today. No. But no. there's something about that. That's the snowblower. That's the <laughs> I smell like a snowblower with a, you know, a busted motor or something. But, yeah. But it is uh, it, the whole atmosphere coming to a game is just a, a terrific thing. That's so great, and we have it back. It's definitely spring. Yeah, Russ, definitely. thank you. You're going to be here for the one o'clock special, be here for the right? One three o'clock special. So, yep. so join us then. It's good being here. I will join you, in fact. And I am. Mr. <laughs> you are going to join. I'll take you up on that. Keep working. And again, okay. yeah. and again <laughs> yeah. Mr. Party. So I'll yeah. see you guys uh, wherever later. Yep. We'll find you out. Right. At, First they, round. They got rid of that thing, <laughs> whatever that was, the, the outfield thing. Have fun, guys. Thanks, Russ. Mr. Party, that's his reputation over here. But no, I mean, it's, it's, it's one of those things that people crave in our area. Uh, the atmosphere of the ballpark, being able to come here, whether it's entertainment value or whether you watch every second and every play, it, it just means that yeah. warmer weather is on the way. And, and it's really a pastime, not just baseball is America's pastime. This is, this is Cleveland's pastime here. Yes. Uh, we are bringing in Fatar Thomas. And the man we behind. Okay, uh, awesome. Oh, you don't hold on. I'm on. So, My have pleasure. you been a busy man the past couple of weeks? 
Oh my goodness, you wouldn't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> what is oh, the, man. we're, we're getting a special dish here. So this uh, is obviously one that you want to show off. What do we it have? It is. This is the double play. It's available in the Terrace Club, which is open to the public, mm -hmm. um, as it has been the last few years. It's an open-faced pastrami sandwich. The double play comes in when we add the bratwurst to it, and we top it with Swiss cheese. And as you can see, it's served with French fries. Mm -hmm. And we also top it off with some Bertmans. Oh, yeah, you, got, you have to. <laughs> got to. You have to. So how long do you spend coming up with these dishes? Oh, my goodness. It's a continuing process. We do it all year long. Um, we through the off season. I'll hold it. It's okay. Fine. <laughs> I'm just gonna sit here and smell. Oh, George wants it. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> um, so all off season long, we're always testing stuff out in the kitchen. The kitchen has become sort of like a lab for us, um, and then we'll throw things out there to the public and see how they if they take and if they do well, then we put them on the menu full time for the next year. Yeah. Do you feel pressure in this stadium because Cleveland has become a foodie town, and we have so much. Uh, so many great local eats. Do you feel like you always have to step it up compared to other ballparks? Um, we certainly feel the pressure compared to other ballparks. Mm -hmm. We're a very competitive bunch. I think that's why we're in sports and we're in baseball. <laughs> um, so we want to outdo everyone else. But talking about local in Cleveland, that's not pressure. That's a blessing. That's great. Yeah. So um, we have 13 local partners. We like to bring Cleveland into the ballpark. You know, we're passionate about our city around here. Yeah. Has it been cool to see the way this stadium has evolved and in, in kind of its approach to food and the way that it's not just hot dogs and peanuts anymore, that, that you're getting the, these first-class meals? Absolutely. I tell people all the time, I, you would be surprised how many people have, oh, I love Progressive Field. I love the Jake. I haven't been there in years. And I'm, you've got to come back. Oh, yeah. You have to come back. All right, we have more to show Because you're going to see some stuff wow. like this. So what is this? <laughs> so here we have our traditional jumbo beef hot dog, but it's top with Cleveland Kraut. So speaking of local partners, uh, Cleveland Kraut is a local company. Um, they've done their own twist and they're very imaginative with Kraut. So I gave you guys the traditional on my left, uh -huh. viewers right, I'm assuming. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then here is my personal favorite, the curry one. Uh, oh, Can you tell curry. I like wow. spicy yeah. food. Oh, nice. <laughs> Do you partner with a lot of local vendors and, and local um, you know, like Cleveland Kraut and, and some yes. of those other places. So going down from Dynamite to Momocho to Melt Bar and Grill, mm -hmm. yes, we have 13 local partners. Um, even Great Lakes, we put some of their food items in, Market Garden. So they're not only in the beer game, they're also supplying food as well. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, so what are some of your other favorites? We have more and more coming in. Wow. We're, I'm, I'm going to have to pass along. This is like I a, heard there a were a lot of people line. here. We wanted to show you guys <laughs> a bunch of our items. We have our short rib poutine here. Oh, now, my this, goodness. It's available o over in the bleachers, section 182. Um, not the healthiest of foods, but it's it's a celebration, right? We're here for opening day. We're here to enjoy ourselves, and that that's our twist on poutine. Wow. So you have somebody coming in let's say hypothetical you have somebody coming in from out of town mm -hmm. and you're telling them okay go to progressive field and try this one thing what would be the one thing you tell them oh. to to go and try there's so much to choose from but right now today it would have to be the fat rooster the, it's a spicy chicken sandwich i know chef's got one he's going to yeah. bring it out um <laughs> We soak it you in Frank's Red Hot. We <laughs> dredge it with a habanero. Here it is. <laughs> this is habanero it. Habanero powder. Oh, wow. Um, it's Look at type, that. topped with a that? vinegar slaw and house-made pickles. And then we top okay. it off with a honey mayo. <laughs> it's delicious. It's very spicy. And where can you find that one? That one is also, a, that's the Fat Rooster. It's the Fat Rooster stand. It was named after the sandwich. Oh, is so good. Oh, okay. In the bleachers, section yeah. 182. Yeah. I remember last year you guys had the meal with the, uh, or the sandwich with the Flaming Hot. Yes, Cheetos, yes, the uh, heater, is, yes. Is that still around? And that, that is still around. This feels almost smoke? like a continuation of that. It is, but it's chicken, and, uh, you know, hot chicken is so trending so well yeah. right now, and so we wanted to jump on board and, and throw our hat into the race and see if we can top everyone. All right, not to not to throw in the Debbie Downer here, like, but, but nobody's dieting when they come to the <laughs> city. But there are so many various diets. Have right. you thought about people who need to go gluten-free, people who are vegan, people Absolutely. who are... Okay, Absolutely. So there's, there's stuff for them here. Section 153, we have a, a stand dedicated to gluten-free. 
um, from gluten-free pretzels to gluten-free beer to all the buns are gluten-free, so no cross-contamination, um, mm -hmm. so you can be taken care of there. And then throughout the ballpark, we also have our vegetarian options. So if you think about Happy Dog with their summer ve vegan sausage, we do veggie burgers. We have a new veggie burger in the Terrace Club called the Beyond Burger. It actually tastes like meat. It, I'm mm -hmm. surprised at how good it is. Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to have to try all of these. Yeah. We have a long list of, of food to try. Chef, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. I know you have a busy day, so we appreciate you taking the time and, and showing off the highlights for Thanks us. for having me. Thank you. All right. So, Ben, now do you have a long uh, long list of things to eat? Yeah, I hope and, they're and serving all that in the press box, too. I don't know <laughs> how, the, how that all works you out. You know, hopefully they left a couple <laughs> of those here back here in the suite for you. But, yeah, yeah. No, that's one of my favorite things about coming to the ballpark is being able to eat. And I know somebody else who, who loves to try all of the food. <laughs> Actually, a couple of people here who are like, did you see all that food, Holly and Dave? Yeah. We, ben, just FYI, we've been yes. we've been here since 4:30 this morning. I'm aware. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're delirious. Yeah. Right, right. I'm and not cult. surprised. Of course, we get to follow up the food. Right? <laughs> yeah. I know. It doesn't surprise me. Do you guys have a favorite? A favorite food? You know, I'm going to go nachos. I'm old school that way. Yeah. That's yeah. one of my ballpark favorites. Yeah, I do love the nachos. Footlong hot dog, yeah. though. I mean, I'm old school, you know, with yeah. the stadium mustard. Yep. Can't beat the brown Everybody's mustard. Everybody's right. got to do yeah. the stadium mustard. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is the only time I give myself that excuse to get, like, the mega ice cream cone, <laughs> you know? Because it, usually it's hot. Not like today, but, you know, you have to, well, I'm at the ballpark. I have to have the huge ice cream right i don't stop eating when i'm at the ballpark <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or drinking well right. wait wait <laughs> a nice soda wait, he means something soda or water. Or pepsi but products speaking of holly yeah. before this you were at the thirsty parrot checking in on the fans <laughs> this at for work for work <laughs> let's verify yeah. all right you yeah. know what i'm just gonna I'm go you guys <laughs> mind here yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Bus. I, I can was, verify it was for work. <laughs> it was for work. It was for work. And uh, we gave away free tickets. It was so fun. We did some tribe trivia. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the Thirsty Parrot was really happening at 10 a.m. <laughs> we're an event town. I've always said it. I yeah. mean, right? How many, how many people party? do you think were there already oh, at 10 a.m.? I mean, I would say there was probably a, at least 50. And that's, yeah. that's quite a bit. Yeah, that is for 10 a.m. some of them were sitting outside. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... You well, know. there are people tailgating in the parking lots across the street. I mean, this almost feels like a Browns game where the whole city just kind of, mm -hmm. it's very ritualistic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, I'm no, sure a lot of people are. are extending their weekend, just taking one more day off. Oh, for and, sure. And, uh, and enjoying a true open day. It's a holiday. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't get to do well, that. you know, Ben brings up the tailgating. I mean, you know, we love St. Patrick's Day, the parade. We love mm -hmm. tailgating. We love the home opener. We would love a playoff game in football, and we would love a World Series in baseball. I mean, when we're in October and the Indians are playing, it feels mm -hmm. much different, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's just the way Cleveland is. So yeah. this, this day is really a holiday for us. I mean, yeah, we love it. So true. We love having Dave on our morning show because anytime any sports story pops up, Holly and I are like, Dave? Dave? <laughs> uh, <so laughs> yeah, that's true. Before we <laughs> started now, I actually said, Dave, yeah. I know. you want to start it? I feel like right. I'm on the spot. Yeah, no, um, no, we um, want to know what yes, your thoughts are today. for this. I mean, we got to hear you all morning, but in case somebody is just joining on our, our website here, what do you think of today's game and this season? Well, I don't think today's game has anything to really do with the overall picture of, of the season I, I think it would be a feel-good win especially since you start one and two in Minnesota you'd like to get that win today just to even up the record and have good feelings but you know let's say they lost 10 to 9 that might feel just as good as a, a, a one nothing victory just for the simple fact that you get nine runs but does that make yeah. sense I mean we just need the offense to do something today because the pitching alone I believe is going to win this division so it really just comes down to you have to get that offense going and there's injuries right now you don't want to make excuses but that's definitely a concern yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. they're just in such wait and see mode too with with Frankie and with the hitting and with everything that's going on, some of the guys they even signed that, that are down in the minors. Uh, you were out in Arizona, though, just like I was. We were we missed each other, but we were both out in Arizona. What did you sense, though, about the energy around the team when you were out there at the start of spring training? Well, I sense that they are okay with the fact that, you know, they lost a lot of guys mm -hmm. and they didn't pick up any big free agents. And I think they're embracing the change. And they actually are excited about younger guys bringing enthusiasm into the locker room and onto the field. Sure, they missed some of their friends that left, but, uh, 
you know, I, they're not going to sit there and, and be down just because the Indians aren't spending as much money. And right. how many times have I said it on the air? You no. know, the Dolans did spend money the last few years, and the players didn't come through. It's time for the players to come through in these playoff games, right? right? Yeah. 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 Cool. All right, well, so are I you guys still warm? Are you no, not, no, are you, no. Have you defrosted yet, Holly? <laughs> we defrosted, we've defrosted some. Yeah, well, this is, no. this is much still bundle different. up. Well, before we go, in. Holly, describe the outfield when oh, we were here earlier. Oh, my goodness. I mean, how many layers, let's be honest, yeah. do we each have on? Not to mention all the warmer stuck in various <laughs> parts of our clothing. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. no, and it's snow. That's how you should dress. I mean, yeah. Right when Ben and I sat down, they were just finishing up with shoveling. Yeah the rest of the ice and snow off the field. We're, so. we're, we're really fortunate that the winds are pretty light today and the sun is out. Those of you that are sitting in the sunshine will feel a lot better than those in the shade. Yeah. But it's okay. And that's the other thing I love about this city. It doesn't matter what the weather's doing. Right. We we could be in any kind of element right now and you'd all be here. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I will end with true. True, yeah. <laughs> true or false? Dave and I are going to go eat all that food that you oh, just oh, sent right, inside. Well, save me a bite. Yeah. So, true. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, right. guys. And we'll be back for the uh, yes. 1 o'clock special. We'll see you on, on air on okay. WKYC. So thanks, guys. Thanks. Thanks for having we'll us. Soon. Um, I don't know. I'm wondering. We have Betsy next? <laughs> Looks like it. <laughs> this happens when, you know, it's just rapid fire, people coming in and out. So, oh, whatever. We're going to get Betsy. <laughs> I'm like, now? Go, oh, go. This seat's been warmed up. This is fantastic. Yeah. Yes. Hey, hi there. I know we get to Gosh, see you. look at you. Oh, look <laughs> at you. We're all bundled in the up. flesh. <laughs> I only get to see you on Instagram with your girls. I know. I know. Yeah. We're, I, I see you at 6 o'clock when I'm preparing dinner in They're, my sweats. Right? And you are all glammed up. <laughs> I'm waving at you. I'm like, oh, my, my daughters know it's Betsy. Um, <laughs> hey, you know, you sat down here, too, and, and they're clearing off snow. the snow. Yeah. I mean, snow what do you think that They even had a field Zamboni. I don't think people understand that li- literally there's like this little machine that goes out and it sprays water on the ice and Does the it snow really? to break it up. And then it drives around and breaks all the ice up just like a Zamboni, you know, over for the monsters, except it, <laughs> instead of refreezing it, they scoop it off yeah. as fast as they Hashtag can. Hashtag only in Cleveland. Well, yeah, and, and, you know, <laughs> Zamboni's on the field, ice melt in the stands. This is Cleveland. So, yeah. but the good news is it's sunny. I mean, it's perfection. If your seats are in the shade... Definitely bundle up because you're going to oh, freeze. Yeah. But if you're in the sun, it's going to be a completely different. You got to remember sunscreen. It's one of those kind of crazy days. Yeah. Park is in sunscreen. So you got to go out to Arizona. Yes. What do you think? What do you think the highlight is? I mean, you've had the the preview, oh. the perspective. What are you looking forward to this season? I think the the thing that will be unique this year is the new players that are coming in. There's new personalities that are coming in. So over the past however many years, we've had, you know, one or two guys who've been like the dominant personalities. Now we have a whole bunch of guys that we haven't met yet. And I got to see some of their, uh, you know, their personalities kind of shine through Jake Bowers, who's adorable. He had that phenomenal catch this weekend. So he can play too. Um, But just, just the, honesty of the guys and the trust that they're building and you can literally kind of see that camaraderie starting to build um but you know we have carlos santana back that lights tito up like you can't believe that's like his boo in the in the clubhouse (laughs) so i mean there's there's a lot of relationship building that's been taking place at spring training that Mm -hmm. can only happen at spring training before they actually hit the playing field so it's always a neat perspective yeah what number opening day is this for you so well, I've started been with uh, WKYC since <laughs> 16 years now, um, and I've been the lead forecaster for the team now for 11 years. So I've b- I've basically done probably 14 opening days. Here. So what, was your yeah. first one the snow day? Um, I think that was my first one. That was 05? I think it was no. seven. Oh, seven. Oh, seven. Yeah, I, they all kind yeah of that was 07. <laughs> so, oh, seven, uh, was no, I was actually, I think I was still back at the station at that okay. point. So, mm. yeah, oh, 08 was my first one out here. Yeah. Oh, seven was mine. I had only started a month before. Yeah. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I have to get up in the chopper. And the, the chopper's not flying, and I'm going to get fired, and I need to get up in the chopper. But, yeah, that was that one was fun. It, it was very interesting, and it's kind of fun because they, they had to kind of redo the entire game field yeah. prep. You know, right. snow yeah. is not bad for a, b- a ball field. It, they grow the grass all winter, and the only thing is is if it smothers, and they have to be really careful as they pull the snow off, yeah. which you saw they were very gingerly doing yes. that this morning. So, yes. uh, But it looks fantastic. It now. does look fantastic. All right. 
Betsy, you're going to be back for the uh, 1 o'clock special That's on right air. Here. Yes, I'll be down third base buddies again with Dave Chudowski. I think we've been third base buddies for forever. So <laughs> We can't break tradition. Every year. No, I'm That's glad we're not. That's what baseball's all about. <laughs> break well, the tradition. Especially it's all about relationship building. Right, like yeah. I said. Right, right. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Betsy. You know, don't you, like, you wear the same socks? Oh. You know, you can't do anything that's going to bring you bad luck. Yeah. you got to do what you did you can't years step on before, the lines. right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm out. Oh. I'm out. All right. This is when we bring in Will. Oh, oh come on in, Here we Will. go. All right. Well, Time thanks, to go WKYC.com, <laughs> buddies. i got to go prep for this 1 awesome. o'clock special. Thanks, Marie. I kept the seat warm for you, Will. <laughs> You're in. You're in, Ben. Thank you. Thanks, Maureen. Will Uick. Man, how's it going? Good. How are you, man? I had that spicy chicken sandwich. Did you? It's, I was it's not that bad out of the gate, but it, it, it really builds up. Yeah. Uh, I'm ready for a glass of milk, but I'm going to plow through. <sighs> awesome. Ooh. How's well, it going? It's going well. Thanks for joining me. No, thanks uh, for having me. Home opener. Uh, it's it's funny. This is going back to my Sports Time Ohio days. Oh, wow. And to Channel 3. I think I'm on uh, maybe like year 11 or something <laughs> of this. Over here, it, it never fails. I'm always over here yeah. usually doing the What's New at Progressive Field, yeah. which I'm doing again uh, today on Channel 3. That's awesome. We'll look forward to that. Uh, we are going to bring in Jeremy Fedor here to talk. No, Jeff Stalker, I'm sorry. Got my names mixed up here. Jeff, welcome. Thank you. How's it going, Jeff? Good to see you again. It's been a long time. It's good to see you, Will. Jeff and I were talking in there about that spicy chicken sandwich. Oh, he yeah. was just laughing. <laughs> so my eyes started to water. He yeah. plowed through it. <laughs> Took care of business. <laughs> Opening day sold out. Uh, yep. 25 straight sellouts here? 25 straight. Going what, strong. What does that streak say about, about Cleveland and, and their love for baseball, obviously? It's all about the fans. I mean, the fans are amazing. Um, my role here, I'm in ticket sales. I, I oversee the season ticket operation and you know, the, the Indians fans and Cleveland sports fans in general, I mean, we love our sports. We love our tribe. We love everybody. But uh, this is like coming home. Uh, it's a celebration of, you know, baseball in Cleveland. You know, it's been a long, cold winter, and it's still not given up yet today. But uh, it's just, it just says everything about how passionate everybody is about the tribe and about, uh, about sports in Cleveland. We always see how quick it sells out. How, how quick is it? I mean, is it almost like you're opening the gates and you've got to close them immediately? Or how fast does it sell out every year? It, it sells out within minutes. So we do a series of pre-sales before the public sale actually begins. So a lot of folks want to know how, could, how is it possible to sell, you know, 36,000 tickets in 16 seconds. A lot of them have already been sold. Of course, season ticket holders already have their tickets and so on and so forth. But it is just a matter of minutes. Uh, this year was a little bit longer than normal, but it was only like four minutes longer than normal. So it just uh, the, the response is overwhelming. It's amazing. And it's always a lot of fun. Those home weekend series, too, Those uh, we have one coming up next weekend already. I live right downtown. There's just such a different vibe around the city when the Indians are in town on a weekend. Those tickets are moving quick, too, aren't they? Well, the, the, the summer weekends especially, but, yeah, yeah all of the weekends are, are uh, moving very rapidly, very quickly. You know, when we redesigned and renovated the right field area and we added the corner markets, and, you know, that's changed the dynamic of the entire ballpark, the lower level. And it's hysterical, you know, on a Friday night before the gates open up, you can see everybody lined up, ready to go. Oh, yeah. And we kind of call it the running of the fools. <laughs> uh, but it's the running of the bulls, you know, where everybody is just going in to get their spot in the corner. But, um, yeah, the, the dynamic that's in the ballpark, you know, everybody's ready to party and have a good time. And then when you get into uh, the warmer months and we've got the fireworks on Friday, it's just a big party. It's a, downtown is totally Is that changed. one of the, the hottest tickets the district? I mean, I, I know growing up I always wanted to sit behind home plate, but I feel like when I come over, that's where I want to be. So when you say the hottest tickets, I mean, the, the truly the hottest tickets are always going to be the best seats in the house. And season ticket holders, for the most part, have – pick those up and and so you've got basically sellouts between the bases now having said that when you get into the individual games yes the the corner the district that's the hot ticket and you know it's a great deal you know it's a it's a low price ticket plus you get you know your your drink voucher to go with it so it's just a, a great social space and a, and a lot of fun kind of feels like a big party a big family oh, yeah. over there Definitely. hey yeah thank you so much we appreciate you thanks, coming guys. out with us thanks, thank you look forward to a great uh, indian season here and i think uh, now we're getting yes. to uh, to jeremy getting ahead of myself it's all right hey you know <laughs> It's an exciting day. It, it definitely it's, is. The funny thing is, if you looked at yesterday's weather, I know it was bad, 
but good thing it wasn't today oh. because with the sun out, it's not too bad. I mean, yeah. it's. I mean, you're still rocking the the knit cap, but I have no hair though. You guys have <laughs> full That's head. the brand. I have full hair. Yeah, okay, no wonder you're wearing the knit cap. Steam coming off this, but and the lights reflect harshly off it. I think so. Um, but hey, it's a. Uh, I don't want to take your guys' uh, leave, but uh, you know, it's 26th or 25th anniversary of this ballpark, and yeah. I mean, it's still lovely, I think. And, uh, you know, there's so much history here in such a short period of time. But in the grand scheme of MLB, we're inching up towards one of the top ten oldest ballparks in MLB because Texas is getting a new one. Oakland's going to be looking to get a new one, Tampa Bay. So uh, we'll be – I think we're 12th right now. So that's kind of uh, amazing when you think about it because, I mean, I grew up with this place. I went to the old place a little bit. But, you know, you don't think of this place as old. At least I don't think yeah. so. And we've done a lot of – uh, stuff around the ballpark to keep it up to date. I think I mean, the scoreboard's fantastic. The district area is unbelievable. And, uh, you know, it's every year. It's the second All Star game we've had here. We'll have three World Series we've hosted, hopefully four. We'll see. Uh, but it's just it's just a great place to catch a ball game. Just to introduce, in case you don't know, Jeremy is the team historian here with the Cleveland Indians. So that's why he's talking a lot about the history <laughs> of, of the stadium, if you didn't know. But it, it is kind of uh, it's it's a cool stadium in, in which you, you say it. It's one of the older ones now. It doesn't feel like it. But you've preserved and tried to preserve some of the history uh, throughout the renovations that you guys have made as well, or at least nodding to it with, with the different areas around kind of uh, talking about some of the statues and, uh, and different pendants and things. I know one of the coolest things that I remember when I used to, to work for Sports Time Ohio is down in the tunnel, there was this giant flag. Uh, yep. That's Tell the, me the story about this giant flag. Uh, I, I'm not sure which uh, Navy ship it was on, but it was like on the USS Cleveland. That's and I, right. And they, they, they ended up giving it to us. And uh, actually on display in the Terrace Club, and our, part of our Feller exhibit, is one of the bells from the quarter deck of uh, USS Cleveland. Uh, again, I'm not sure which one. There's been multiple USS Clevelands. But, you know, with, with Bob Feller and his history with the Navy, we have such a tight relationship. Uh, I know the Secretary of the Navy has popped by every once in a while. So we have a very close relationship with Navy, and we have Navy Week here. Um, I know last year they were around. They actually had a, a robot that was like a bomb defusing robot drop off the first pitch ball the one day. So, you know, it's a lot of uh, cool partnerships we have, and that's one of them. A lot of history. I think we've got one minute here. You're the team historian. It's opening day. What's one fun fact we should know about opening day? Uh, you know, my, my favorite fact, and I guess when you think about like that Dolphins team that always celebrates when a team loses, you know, so the perfect record is still intact. Feller's opening day, and we're past the opening day, opening day, but Feller's opening day, no hitter, still the only one uh, in baseball. And this year, I think it was the Tigers game, that went to double no hitters until like the seventh. So, like, you get a little antsy. I mean, if it happens, cool, but it's, it's kind of cool to have Bob still have the only opening day, no hitter in baseball history. Yeah, no doubt about it. Well, Jeremy? Thanks for joining Thank us. You guys. Appreciate it. Go try. We'll let you put your hat back on now. <laughs> Interesting piece of trivia there. I didn't know about that. But it yeah. is it is it's funny because I know we some of the Dolphins they had that perfect streak with Feller. I don't know if they would count a home opening uh, no hitter or does it have to be opening day? I think day? opening day, but we had Jim over here earlier and he was talking about the first game in the stadium uh, back in 1994, Randy Johnson was like had a uh, perfect game going through the seventh, and Bob Feller was actually up in the press box wa watching it along and, and kind of, uh, yeah, gave out one of those 72 Dolphins celebrations <laughs> once it got broken up uh, with a Sandy Alomar hit. Uh, we are going to bring in, though, the newest member of our WKYC sports team. Look at his tie, man. Yes. Uh, <laughs> He's all dressed, dressed up. up. He thinks it's the prom. He's in there trying to take photos uh, in front of well, the I'll, drop down. I'll tell you what. I've Sorry. been here just about two years. I still haven't gotten my first Betsy Kling selfie. You got one I, just over yeah, there. It's not even in. your first official <laughs> day walked, yet. She walked right by me. Didn't even say hello. Grabbed yeah. him and run him out. I figured I'd dress up because it's opening day. But from here on out, it'll probably be T-shirts. I think that's what you were rocking, Will. You showed me undercover. Yeah. So, uh, But listen, excited it's to a, join the team. You look nice. You know what? You look good. Uh, you know. Got to look good, play good. Is that what Deion said? You classed this up a little bit. Yeah, okay. exactly. <laughs> but it's great to be here. Um, excited to, to join WKYC. You guys are an all-star team, and um, I'm just uh, hoping to, to bring something to that. So it's Acqu exciting. Acquired from WTAM. Yes. Uh, how many opening days is this for you now? Uh, this will be my 10th. Wow. Um, you know, because I, I was in my 10th year at, at WTAM. So um, pretty wild. Time flies. I can't believe, guys, we're already in year seven of Terry Francona. Yeah. He doesn't seem like he just got here. That, yeah, that's crazy. You know what I mean? So, um, but, hey, they've had so much success under him, and opening day is always a special time no matter what they did uh, the last couple of days. There's still 159 more, and uh, I think expectations are, are still high for this group, yeah. despite maybe what we hear on talk radio or what we see on, on the digital side of things. But um, 
It's it, it, listen. Opening day in Cleveland it feels like a holiday, and that's exciting. You said Francona's seventh year already. I, I remember the the Acta days. It felt like the team <laughs> always started so slow. Yeah. Um, and that's something that Francona kind of rectified a little bit, but the bats yeah. still seem to struggle a little bit. The yeah. pitching's there right now. That's what worries me. What do you guys see? Yeah. Well, I, I think pitching's always ahead of the hitting a little bit, but this I don't think this, this cold weather helps very much no. um the other thing is though too i talked to chris antonetti a little bit earlier he said you know we can use that as an excuse but the other team has to play in it too mm -hmm. how many runs of the twin score yesterday what nine so i mean you got to just grind through it it's april we know the numbers aren't going to be there the good thing that you mentioned will is that they've got great starting pitching i mean the starting five in my mind if not the best in the american league all of baseball so um i think they're in a good spot but you know again you got you got to see runs when you're playing in the american league you need runs, and, and they're going to have to, you know, manufacture those. Yeah, the, I mean, the pitching staff is just so absurd. Like, we're talking <laughs> about Mike Clevenger starting game four. Mike Clevenger would be overqualified as a number three pitcher. Like, oh, this sure. is this is just such an absurd depth of, of starting pitching and talent. Uh, as far as the hitting, though, like, it almost feels like an extended spring training. It, it doesn't feel like spring training out here, but um, – you know, I'm, I'm really interested in Carlos Gonzalez down in the minors and uh, Cameron Mabin, who they signed on Friday. Like, these are kind of the flyer guys, especially in the Francona era. You, uh, Melky Cabrera and, and Rajay Davis, guys who they take flyers on on these minor league contracts. Uh, we've seen it with Hanley Ramirez already. Yeah. They're, they're going to need... They get a good track record of that, too. They do. Of grabbing that person that had maybe uh, something that was keeping other teams yeah. away and going... We're going to try to rehab. We're going to take a chance. It's a lotto scratch yeah. off, and they've hit a lot of those. Well, and I think this year, too, after losing Michael Brantley, like they have to hit on one or two of those. And, and we've already seen them kind of hit on Hanley Ramirez, although it's early. But between Carlos Gonzalez and, and Cameron Mabin, I really think they need one of those guys to, to step up and uh, take ownership of one of those corner outfield spots. Yeah, and I think, as, as Will said, too, they've done it before. They've right. just got to hit on those guys. They're low-risk, high-reward type signings. There's a reason Hanley Ramirez was available. Got cut by the Red Sox last year. He's had some injuries. But as Ben, you pointed out on Twitter the other day, the Hanley <laughs> Ramirez era has started. I don't know if that ball has landed yet <laughs> that he hit in Minneapolis. So, um, you know, hopefully you can hit on a guy like that. Hopefully you can stay healthy and you need them. You know, you need bats in the middle of this lineup. you got to produce runs. And, um, unfortunately, what did they lose, 200 runs batted in over the offseason when you think yeah. about it? So they've got a lot to replace. Hopefully those low-risk, high-reward type signings. You mentioned Cargo, a guy who's done it before. I temper my expectations sometimes when guys are coming from Colorado. Right. Got to be careful. But still, in his, in his age, the back of his baseball card says he can still do it. So hopefully they can hit on those guys. Do you think this frees up Frank Cohn a little bit? A lot of people have talked about maybe playing almost more like a National League team, right? You have some yeah. more speed and more maybe on-base guys versus, you know, Encarnacion's yeah. gone. You don't really have that traditional power that a lot of lineups yeah. do. Yeah, and he talked about that at spring training a little bit. Well, I mean, uh, listen, Yonder Alonso, nice player, but he clogged up the base paths. You mentioned Encarnacion. That's another guy. Yeah. Hopefully they can start doing more first to third, you know, going second to home quickly, stealing bags. I think, you know, stolen bases are kind of a, a lost art a little bit, and I think if they can do that a little bit more, be aggressive, um, that'll help. So, yeah, they're going to need – to manufacture runs, and that's one of the ways to do it that we don't see as much anymore. Yeah. Runs are runs, right? right? Runs are runs. <laughs> Regardless and of how you score them. Exactly. And you know what? We see all these stats now, you know, the sabermetrics analytics era. If anyone ever wants to tell you what type of baseball team you have, like offensively, just go look at the runs scored column. Anyone can tell you anything. Else. Just go look at runs scored, and you're all set. <laughs> Nick, real quick, uh, let them know when, when they, can they see you if they're trying to watch you on Channel 3. Uh, I think it'll be this upcoming weekend. We'll start, uh, yeah, you'll start seeing me a little bit more, and then obviously after that too. So really excited to join the team. You guys are great, and can't wait. He'll have that tie ready to go. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Good to I'll see you. I'll the same one. Is that all right? I, I like that. I like I that every time. And I think uh, we're moving on. Austin uh, joining us with, with the Indians? Not yet. Not quite yet. Pump fake right there. Yes. Interesting, though, because I feel like, as we were talking about, Nate, we have yes. gone from a lot of traditionally power teams in Cleveland where we make all of our runs off the home run. This may be a year that's a little different. Yeah, and I think especially while Lindor's out of the lineup, and I yeah. think you'll still see it when Lindor gets back in the lineup, but without him, you, you just don't have those power bats while, while you're still waiting on Carlos Gonzalez, uh, while you're still waiting to see what you have in Cameron Maven. So they just got to find a way to score runs, whether that's going over the fence or, or going first to third, like Nick said. Uh, so we want to welcome in Zach. This is our super fan. That is. Okay, uh, awesome. Oh, you don't hold on. On Saturday night, I went to the opening day out there. My brother and I went to Seattle last year for opening day. Um, I brought my dad. We actually sat right down here for Game 7 of the World Series. Um, tattoo. 
about 20 plus hats. How many games you go to a year? What uh, do you think? At least, I mean, easily double digits. Yeah. Yeah, and I try to make it. I mean, I try to get up here eight or nine times. I try to go to a different stadium every couple years. What at, at what point in your life with the Indians were you like? Were you like, okay, this is it? Like this, this is my calling as far as my my fandom is. I'm pretty sure I came out of the womb in an Indians <laughs> hat, so I'm gonna say right there. Um, I've been an Indians fan a lot longer than I've been a Browns and a Cavs fan, I would say. Um, but the Indians have just always, always, I mean, the one year I remember was 2007, obviously, when yeah. uh, we got close to the World Series, and that just broke my heart. And ever since then, it's just been, let's do this. Let's get it done. Let's get it done. And then 2016 came, and, you know, we're right here, and Rajay hits the home run in the eighth, and everything's going in your favor, and then all of a sudden it doesn't. You're like, all right, so we're going to keep trying to do this and do this, and uh, hopefully just this year's our year. What is it about the Indians? You talked about, you know, they you've been an Indians fan longer than the Browns or the Cavs or anything like that. What is it about this baseball team that has kind of pulled your heartstrings so much? Uh, my dad grew up, or I grew up watching baseball with him. I played baseball since I was three, um, and it was just my favorite sport and my favorite team and my favorite city, and it was just an easy pick for me. What's your outlook for this season? Uh, well, I win the division. Um, everyone's saying, I mean, social media, you see a lot about how this team isn't going to be, you know, how as good as it was last year. I Let them get, get warmed up. Let them get started. I mean, it's baseball. Anything anything can happen, literally. And so win the division, hopefully make it back to the series, but uh, playoffs will be exciting again. Who, who's your big surprise? Uh, we got a couple of new guys coming in. we got some younger guys coming up. Who are you looking at this year that you think can step up into the shoes that maybe have been left vacant by uh, Encarnacion? Or we talked about uh, some of the people that have left. Oh, there's like there's been a couple, but um, you know everyone's been hating on Naquin. I hope he actually, I mean, he struck out a lot this past weekend, but hopefully he can get back and get things rolling. Um, he saved us, or the the home run was pretty much his the inside the Parker was his career highlight hopefully he has a lot more this year and hopefully he's the one that really proves people wrong and can actually come out and get things done and get the offense rolling for the tribe i know when, when you're a sports fan like you have your favorite player and then you have like your favorite favorite player like everybody's favorite player i think is francisco lindor or jose right. ramirez but you kind of have that one player who's maybe not an all-star somebody who's near and dear to your heart who you claim do you have a player like that that, that plays for us yeah oh uh shane beaver yeah, yeah. I, I'm. I was a pitcher, so I loved and I love the. Uh, I mean, I like Bauer, I like uh, Clevenger, I like Kluber, obviously. But Shane Beaver's something about uh, the new pitchers when they come up and they they're that explosive and that exciting, like last year he was. So I, I'm really look forward to what he has this year. I want to test how big of a super fan you actually are. Okay. okay, if you were to have a son or daughter, would you name them after something Cleveland Indians related? Francisco. Francisco, yeah. guy or girl, guy or girl, yeah. Francisco. I think it's gender neutral. I think, I think it is too. I'm just checking. I'll, I'll push for it. No, I mean, uh, odds of it actually happening. Are <laughs> happy wife, happy life. Yeah, exactly. I'll let you know about that. But you can you yeah. can make an Fra attempt. No, Francisco, boy or girl, would be my pick. What? Either that's way. a super fan. Yeah. Fan. No, there's no question about it. Uh, when you pick out what you're going to wear to this, is there anything that goes into? Um, I wore my. I have a actually a pinstripe Indians jersey. It has Indians across the chest in the cursive like normal. No number on the back, and it's a thicker one. And I have patches from every single World Series the Indians oh, have been wow. to. So I wore that this or on, what was that, Thursday we opened up? Yeah, and then this year I just went to try to stay warm, so I went with yeah. the thickest <laughs> sweatshirt I had. So Practical. to stay warm mode. Yeah. We hope you do stay warm. Thanks Thank for visiting you. us here Thank at the Super Thanks, Zach. Thank you. Enjoy Thank today. you so much. Uh, it, it is interesting. A lot of people have those superstitions, especially around sports. Yeah. You know, it's like you always have to wear this on opening day or at, at that playoff game. You got any of that? Uh, actually, 2016, when I was back down in Columbus, I wasn't up here working for WKYC. I was just a, a fan watching the Indians, hoping they won the World Series. And uh, they got up 3-1, and I was wearing a Francisco Lindor jersey uh, that I bought earlier in the playoffs for every one of those games. So I'm somebody who – when I'm wearing something and they win, it's weird because I'm not a very superstitious person otherwise, but something about what I wear for a sports game, like I just have to stick with it. Yeah. What about you? No, I'm with you. I, I, I Not very superstitious at all, but a lot of times when I'm at home like watching TV yeah. and, okay, they score – I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna change the channel. I'm not gonna touch the volume. It doesn't matter. We're yeah. staying right here on this. 
Other times it, it'll change like, okay, we're losing. Let me maybe go down a few stations, then up a few stations and see if that helps. <laughs> so uh, typically not, but uh, but at, at the time when your sports team's trying to get a win yeah. and you think anything you do even has a remote effect on it's it. It's so silly. I think you try to give it a shot. <laughs> yeah, there's no doubt about it. I think that's one thing, though, that's fun about opening day, though, is just the, the pageantry of, of picking out what you're going to wear, which jersey, which hat you're going to go with. And uh, I think you'll see everybody here in their opening day finest. I have a, I had an Indians t-shirt that I wore for the longest time to opening day. Uh, even here when I worked for Channel 3, I would have that, yeah. that t-shirt on. Eventually kept shrinking, kept shrinking, kept shrinking. Got a little too small. Either that or I got too big. I don't know. Maybe a combination of both. But uh, so I had to upgrade to a new one that I wear. And even when it's, you know, like this, when it's 30, I got it on underneath this. Yeah. But then you got to stack up the layers on top of yeah. it. I think Cleveland does a good job with that. I always call the Muni lot the best fashion show in America because of what people put into to their outfits. And It's and a good fashion show. It's also a good car show. Yeah, <laughs> you go down and you check out what some of the people have done to their different. Although you don't get that as much with with the Indians, I don't know if they. Need I to saw a little more of it today, actually, you... walking over here to the stadium. I, I saw actually some Browns, like some of the trucks from the Muni lot out in the uh, parking lot there. Okay, so Austin with the Indians joining us now. Good Thanks to see guys. you, buddy. Okay, uh, Austin, oh, you know, hold on. I'm on. <laughs> That's exactly right. Getting I mean, all this. It's two a.m. Friday. I actually, you know, was just here just taking the snow off the whole field by myself. I saw you over there with a the shovel. <laughs> yeah, did, no, did, no. Did a nice uh, job. A lot of people doing a lot of uh, great work to get this ballpark ready for opening day. And, uh, we got what looks to be a great day upon us. Sunny day. Yeah, it, who would have thought? And especially in the sun, I feel like it takes the chill out of the air a little yeah. bit. I was down on the kind of warning yeah. track walking around, and when I got in that sun, I felt like, okay, yeah, this isn't bad. I think well, you can play ball in this. I mean, you were here Friday. The temperature dropped from 60 to probably 40 yeah. in the morning and then the wind really picked up and when the wind gets picking up here it it, it gets cold real quick so to have uh sun and not a ton of wind is a uh, pretty nice recipe for an opening yeah. day austin uh, one of the cool things people really look forward to when they come to opening day baseball is what's changed at the ballpark like what am i going to see is there anything cool unique different what can i eat that's different uh is there any new merchandise uh, so what, what can someone expect coming through for the first time in 2019? Yeah, we got a ton. I think the biggest thing was our uh, club lounge, completely renovated, hadn't been touched since 1994. The Discount Drug Mart Club Lounge uh, is the new rebranding of it. Completely opened up the space. Florida ceiling windows, they slide completely open, so even if you're in the club in the summer when the weather's really nice, you're going to feel like you're part of the action. Uh, the Brew Kettle sponsored both bars. There's an outside bar and an inside bar. The outside bar has drink rails because every time we put something new in here now, we got to have some drink rails because <laughs> Cleveland loves their drink rails. For people so. like Ben, right? <laughs> exactly. And it, it is a fun time. So that's really cool. Uh, besides that, you mentioned merchandise. We have the All-Star Game coming in mid-July. We have a completely separate All-Star Game tent out in the right field gate area right off East 9th. So it's a complete pop-up tent, all All-Star Game merchandise. And that's actually only staying up until the end of July. So that's a really cool new addition from the merchandise side. Uh, and then we have uh, brand new beer partners here at the Indians. So Miller Coors is uh, our official uh, domestic beer partner. And so you'll see out here in uh, left field, it is now the Miller Lite Porch, uh, branded very uh, Miller Lite friendly over there. And then uh, Great Lakes Brewing Company is our official craft beer partner, which is really cool. So they're going to have, they've been in the ballpark, but they're going to have a bigger presence. And stuff you find in their breweries and exclusive pub selections is now going to be here at the ballpark, which is really cool, too. Yeah. yeah. That's you, you mentioned the All-Star Game and the merchandise. How much does that kind of hang over this season in terms of the branding? And obviously you see the patches on the jerseys and on the hats, but that's obviously something that's a big deal, not just – come July but all season long oh it's huge and I think you know the biggest thing for us as a city uh, in Cleveland has something really really something to be proud of here is that we're the only city with one baseball team to have the all-star game six times now which is really cool so like like cities like New York and Chicago they've accomplished that but they have multiple teams uh, Cleveland obviously doesn't have that and so it's it's going to be such a cool uh, atmosphere in July coming right off of the 4th of July, what's better than baseball on that holiday? So, uh, you know, it's a huge part. And we've been planning for over a year now for the All-Star Game. So um, I think everyone here is just really excited to see that come and take over the city for a week. Awesome. Thank you so much, man. Thanks, Thanks for man. popping in with us. Of course. Uh, appreciate it. Right. Good a lot seeing of people you excited too. about the All-Star Game. A yeah. lot of people excited about getting the home schedule ready to rock and roll here, get yeah. the weather warmed up, and who knows what can happen, right? Yeah, yeah. no Go question Go Thank it. you, guys.
Yep, and that is going to do it for us here on Tribe Time on WKYC.com. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned on WKYC right now. Our season, op our home opener special for Will Ewick. It's underway. I'm Ben Axelrod. Thanks for watching. is undergone an amazing transformation over this weekend because of the weather but as you can see it is manicured and pristine and as beautiful as ever as progressive field is ready for the indians and the chicago white sox as the indians open up their home season and we're ready to go here on channel three and the story of the ballpark is an amazing one as we welcome you right along the first baseline. Jim Donovan along with Sarah Schickman and Russ Mitchell. Let's take you through what started out over the weekend as rain on Saturday, snow on Sunday, <laughs> and then a massive cleanup to make this ballpark beautiful. It is amazing what they went through. So this is how it was as they started to uncover and shovel. The grounds crew here from 1130 until deep into the evening last night took a break for some sleep and came right back at it and really just about an hour ago cleared the final bit of snow out in right field and the finished product is you would never know it snowed. You would not. You this wouldn't. is remarkable. It really is. It's great to see the guys come around, the folks who have been working on the field for all these hours, and Jimmy's been telling them, great job, and they have a sense <laughs> yeah. of pride. It's like, thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, I'm telling <laughs> you. A transformation it has been, as you just saw in that video right there. There's a few little signs. I don't know if you guys have noticed. There's a little bit of ice on the armrest. If you come to find your seat, they've been sprinkling ice melt out over the stands just to make sure. But the sun is making a big difference. Feels good down yeah, here right now. It does now. feel good. We've been worse, as you said in your intro there. Yeah. What, eight inches of snow yeah, back in what, 2007? It was unbelievable, Russ and Sarah. It was amazing. They were playing the Seattle Mariners here, and it snowed the entire weekend. But the Indians would not give it up on that opening day. They were <laughs> hell-bent that they wanted to play. And I was calling the game on Channel 3 that day, and we sat in snow delays and blizzard-type oh wow. conditions yeah. for four hours. And the Indians were robbed, and Paul Bird in particular robbed of a perfect game by one strike when wow. they called the game wow. off. And the Indians actually had to leave Cleveland that weekend and go off to Milwaukee to play because no games were going to be played here in Cleveland on that particular weekend. Well, no weather issues today. I remember a couple years ago we were doing the special. We had done the special. And sometime, what, 15 minutes before we were done, the Indians came out and said, by the way, Jimmy. We aren't going to play. Uh, we aren't <laughs> yeah. going to play today. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> you know, Sarah, you mentioned about the ice on the armrests of the uh, seats here. And that's right. She's absolutely on point with that. I think that's to keep the beer the beer cold here. Oh, is that, that is? Yeah, that's, a, that's, that's a new feature. Right? Yeah. I like that. You might see a little by your feet, too, if you need to put park an extra back there. You can keep I it like chilled. It. <laughs> well, Smart. here we go. Uh, the opening weekend did not go well for the Indians on the road. But remember, the Indians are an incomplete team right now. Francisco Lindor is not here. He's injured. He got injured in that minor league walk-up to the regular season last week. And, of course, a big day for him today. He's in Green Bay, Wisconsin. So he's in the cold weather too but he's seeing a foot specialist there to hopefully get thumbs up that that ankle is going to be okay and he'll be here soon but the Indians had a rough weekend in Minnesota against the Twins nothing to be read into that okay they are still the favorite to win this division but it's going to be an interesting year to say the least to open this Cleveland baseball season a choice for all of you would you be content if the Indians used their strength, their pitching, to win the American League Central Division again, make it to the playoffs, and then just roll the dice? Or would it be better for the Indians to gauge that their current championship window has closed significantly, and it's time to reload for the future? 
And to do that, they would have to trade assets. That's a tough choice for 2019. As we sit today, the Indians are head and shoulders above the rest in their division. The Tigers, Twins, Royals, and White Sox are all rebuilding at the same time. You roll out Kluber, Bauer, Carrasco, Clevenger, and Bieber in the Indians' rotation, and the rest of the Central Division will come to their knees by the beginning of August. Remember, the Indians had the division pretty well sewn up last year on Memorial Day. But the Indians had more offense last year, too. And a lot of that offense walked away when the Indians cut their payroll by 15 million. Encarnacion, Alonzo, Brantley, Gomes, and the rental of Josh Donaldson, they're gone. The fail-safe bullpen of Andrew Miller and Cody Allen, they're gone too. And the winter was quiet in the way of additions, except for Carlos Santana coming back for a second tour here in Cleveland. The Indians need Francisco Lindor and Jose Ramirez even more than they've needed them over the last three years. And we're all nervous as the Lindor contract clock is ticking louder and faster. Owner Paul Dolan's comments from last week told us to enjoy Lindor now, but a long-term deal seems undoable. Lindor and Ramirez start this season hurt, but the worry in the organization is how they finish the year. Because in the last two playoff years, Lindor and especially Ramirez have not hit and the Indians have been eliminated. So July becomes the key month, my friends. The All-Star Game comes to Cleveland. The trading deadline hits at the end of that month. Do the Indians buy or sell? And then they get hit with the biggest reality. Baker Mayfield takes over the town. And I mean, he's ready to take over. Wouldn't it be a shame if with all of that great pitching that the Indians have had during this latest run doesn't win them a World Series? The reality might be the window is slipping shut. So that's the dilemma for the Indians right now. The window is definitely a lot tighter than it was a couple of years ago, where the Indians kind of kicked themselves in the seat of the pants, should have won the World Series against the mm -hmm. Cubs. They were up three games to one mm -hmm. with games six and seven here, and they let it get off the hook. That was probably their best chance. And there used to be an old joke here in Cleveland, and you know, I'm kind of a prankster. The old <laughs> joke used to be, back when Bernie Kosar was playing, when the Browns opened up training camp, that was usually the last day of the Indian season because people wow. just flooded to the yeah. Browns. Yeah. We may be back in that kind of a scenario this year. Interesting today that the Browns are introducing Odell Beckham Jr. as well during opening day festivities. Yeah, and there is a little bit of a story behind that. Odell Beckham Jr. wanted to come in for the first day of the new off-season conditioning program, and that hit today out in Berea with the Browns and everywhere else that has a new coach in the NFL. But he has commitments over in Europe you know, like all, like all of us. I of mean, we, normally <laughs> on the weekends we go to Europe. Yeah. He has that, so he came in today. This was the only day he was going to be here, and then he was going to come back. So don't read anything else. No, in I don't that. think That's that this is them trying okay. to steal the Indian spotlight at all. I think they wanted to introduce him and then introduce him to his teammates, to the city a little bit, and, and then move on. Okay, all makes right. sense. Thank Dave, you. Super Dave Chodowski, who we never seen anymore. Now that he's a big hot shot. Now, is, is, Russ, is it Super Dave Chodowski <laughs> well, or a cheap prank you know, that it's Ryan Day, the head coach at Ohio State? <laughs> As I say, you've never seen you know, them both I, in the same room together. That's Absolutely. so true. Yeah. You do say this. <laughs> Super Dave joins us over on the third baseline this morning. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm the busiest guy in the state of Ohio. You know how hard it is to manage uh, the Buckeyes football team and also do this as well? Yeah, it's a little bit of hard work for sure. Great to see you guys. Miss you definitely. But I'll tell you, this morning when we were out here live at 5 a.m., it was incredible to see this place, the tarp on the field, the entire outfield covered with ice and snow. And Jim talked about it before. Hats off to the grounds crew here because right now this field looks immaculate right now, right? to get going for the home opener here today and you know I know a lot of people are down on the way the first three games went the Indians only scoring five runs and 39 strikeouts but I think on this day we have to think about the positive and what this team can give this city let's not forget this rotation is unbelievable you have five of the best pitchers in the entire game and also let's think about this Francisco Lindor he is not yet with the team. So when we get Lindor back, when the Indians have him back, they feel much better about where this offense can be. And Lindor obviously had the first injury and then had another injury that he was dealing with in spring training. 
So when you're dealing with two different injuries, that obviously can be a cause for concern, but we are hopeful that Lindor will be back soon with his team, and it's obviously an offense that would get a lift when Lindor is back. And now joining me live, there he is, the man, Terry Francona. <laughs> Those are some cold hands. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's been, hey, you should have been out here at 5 a.m. Uh, it was, was, uh, when I came in here this morning, it was a little brisk. Oh, it, feels, it doesn't feel that bad right now. Yeah. Well, you know, 19 years, this will be your 19th home opener as a manager, seven now at the Indians. I mean, sometimes it seems like it goes like it was yesterday and sometimes it feels like it's been 19 years <laughs> <laughs> well how do you feel about this one well you know what you get excited i mean there's always things to be excited about you know the younger kids going through it for the first time leonis martin being welcomed back but when i woke up this morning what i'm thinking about is how are we going to beat the white Sox? You, you you know want to be able to enjoy the the pageantry because it's cool but i want us to win the game that's what we're here for terry we can't ever look too much into three games but your outlook so far the concern about this team with losing guys was the offense and we, we see five runs and 39 strikeouts but yeah. i know we never can panic you well and it's it doesn't do you any good it's not helpful to win when we're striking out as much as we are as we saw but that's not going to continue. Um, the, 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 the quicker that it stops, the better. We've got some guys that are really good hitters. Mm -hmm. It took Hosey a little bit to get on track last year. We know he's going to hit. You know, we've got some younger guys that are at the bottom of the order that they're, they're just trying to survive right now. So we can't put too much on them. You know, but it's, it's, it's a team game. You're going to go through these. We knew this could happen coming out of camp. We just got to fight through it. Okay, so I was just talking about Francisco Lindor here before you came on. Where is he at right now? When do you think we might see him? Well, we'll know a lot more, I think, tomorrow. He's in Green Bay today getting looked at by Dr. Anderson, and we should have a lot more information tomorrow. We're just trying to do the right thing and have him seen by the best so we can do the right thing. You can't just do the right thing when it's convenient. You got to do it all the time. So that's what we're trying to do. So on the flip side, pitching, we knew that was the strength, how amazing the staff is. So good to see them come out strong in Minnesota. Yeah, and that's the, if I had a choice, I'd, I'd rather have a team that's struggling to hit than struggling to pitch because that's a hard way to win. We got a guy that goes out there every day that we feel like we got a chance to win, and not a lot of teams can say that. Boy, that's so true. Listen to that, everyone. That <laughs> is key. I'm not going to let you go until we take a look at this piece of video, all right? And you can't see it, but everyone at home can, and that is you skydiving. Yeah, that's, yeah. yeah. And, well, that, I guarantee you one thing. That's not going to become a habit. <laughs> um, I, I got to be honest. When I first saw it, I was like, wow. I, I, you know what? I, I, I was stunned. Well, well, I was swimming this winter with some Navy Seals. Deals. One thing led to another, and they asked me if I'd ever done it. And I'm like, no. And they're like, well, we'll we would do it with you. Well, once you say yes, you know, it's like, you know, and then, then one day leads to another. And you, it's like, you know, would you rather die of embarrassment or die? And it's like, you know, I, I chose the other one. I, I had a ball. I, it was a good team building mm -hmm. thing. I have no ambition to do it anymore. Not again. No, huh? no, I'm okay. I'll, I'll stay on the ground. Wow, how'd your head feel? No, like, like there was a train inside it, and it was going to explode. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'll tell you, the landing seemed smooth, though. It was, the guys were great. They were so good to us. And the second time I went, I wore a helmet, and it made it so much more fun because my head didn't feel like it was going to explode. So I got to actually enjoy some of it. Two times. That's incredible. But that's wow. it. Yeah, that's, that's it. We're be done. No three. Yet. Okay. All right. Well, good luck today. Thank we you. hope that you get Thanks. it done. And uh, man, I tell you, it's just great to have baseball. Thank back. you. I agree. I agree. Yeah. And uh, as it warms up, it'll be even better. Oh, let's let's get it. Enjoy warm. the day. All right, Terry. See thank you, you so okay. much. All right, Tito, Terry Francona, Indians manager. How about that? His seventh season as the Indians manager, and we're hoping this is the magical one that has a World Series championship at the end, Russ. We certainly are. All right, Dave, thanks so much. Joining me right now, Indians team president, Chris Antonetti. Chris, it's good to see you once again on As opening always, day. good to see you, Russ. You going to jump on any planes anytime soon? I did, actually. I was on that second day with you. Really? I was one of the guys on that, on that crew. What prompted time. you to do that? 
Well, it's something I'd wanted to do for a uh, while, then uh, when a handful of other guys wanted to go, I figured I'd hop in with them. Well, Tito's Once I got signed off from my family, I didn't go the first time <laughs> because you. my wife and daughters weren't all that enthused, but they warmed up to it. Tito says he's not going to do it again. How about you? Uh, I'm more open to doing it again, again, okay. if I can get approval on it. Uh, so. Well, good for you. Good for you. Let's talk a little baseball here. Great. We know what opening day is like for the fans. We just heard what it's like for the team. For the front office, what does home opening day mean? Oh, it's one of the best days of the year. It's a, it should be a national holiday. It's the start of a new season, and for us, one with high expectations and hopefully another Central Division championship and a chance to go on to the World Series. What are the biggest challenges you face this year? Well, health first and foremost. Yeah. We've got some critical guys that are working their way back from injury. And then we have also some young players that are trying to make a name for themselves and establish themselves as major league players. So the combination of those two things are things that we'll have to work through over the course of the season. Looking ahead now, you've said you cannot build a team solely through free agency. So what are you looking at? What's the, what's the future like? Yeah, I think for us it's nothing different. Is that we will build successful teams from players that come through our minor league system. And the majority of our innings and plate appearances are going to be guys that come through our system. And if you look at the success we've had over the course of the last six seasons, it's guys like that have, that have fueled and uh, propelled our success. And that's what we expect moving forward. We talked about this, I think, last year. Biggest challenge for a small market team like Cleveland? I think we just have to do things differently. Yeah. We have the same goal as every other team, which is how do we find a way to win a World Series? And in our market, we need to do things differently because if we do things the same way as the Yankees or Red Sox or Cubs, they're going to end up winning. So we need to do it differently and do it better. As team president, when you look at these contracts being doled out with uh, Bryce Harper with $330 million, uh, Mike Trout $430 million as well, do you get jealous what goes through your head? No. I, well, I'm happy for them, yeah. first and foremost. And those are great players, some of the best players in the game that deserve to be compensated really well. And what I'm hopeful is that it's a sign that our industry is healthy and that the future of baseball will continue to be bright and, and continue to grow. As a team president, do you look at, do you look at those and go, you know what? I, I wish I could do that. What what goes through your head? Other than uh, yeah. being happy for them, yeah. of course. I don't spend a lot of time thinking about that. I think what we try to reflect on is how do we build championship teams in Cleveland and what do we need to do to make that happen? Gotcha. And success defined this year other than winning a World Series? We hope we get there, but how do you define For that? me, it's winning a World Series. Okay. When we don't, we're frustrated and disappointed. But hopefully that journey along the way leads to some great memories for us, for everyone here, our players, our staff, and most importantly, our fans. Fingers crossed. Chris Atnani, thank you so much. Thanks, As Chris. always, have, all, have a great season. Thank you. And be careful jumping out of that plane next time. I will. I will. Thank you. Great to be here with you, Russ. The great Betsy Kling is over on the third base side. We'll let us know. We're going to thank her for this beautiful oh. weather today. We talked earlier. It has been so much worse. This is fantastic. I can't take credit for it because, you know, I don't take credits when it's bad. And actually, it's so good, I'm not even going to do the weather. I give up. I'm going to let Carlos Carrasco do the weather today. All right. <laughs> good morning, everyone. Today's a beautiful day here in Cleveland for opening day. Uh, for the game time, we're going to be at 40 degrees. So it's a beautiful day. Wait for you guys. All right. So uh, for the rest of the people out there, all of northern Ohio, temperatures are in the 30s. We're above freezing. Yeah. That's good. Ashtabula, you'll be thawing out very soon. But, Cookie, the best news, crystal clear blue skies. This is perfect Sunny baseball day, yeah. weather. You can't miss on this stuff. Well, you can even see on the visible satellite, see that white stuff on the ground that's not moving? That's yep. the snow on the ground. They had to clear the snow off the field just a couple hours ago. Now, for the rest of the afternoon, look at this. We're going to be flirting with 40. There may be some high clouds passing through but for the most part nothing but sunshine beautiful weather you sir are an all-star because <laughs> not only you know are you an amazing pitcher but you can do weather anytime all right I anytime. Would do. awesome <laughs> thank you we're gonna send it upstairs to holly and maureen i mean you guys you can't pass this up right no, he did a great job. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Betsy. Yeah, Betsy, thank you so much. So we've been here all morning. Yes, I mean, we got here night. at 4.30. <laughs> we slept here and did our makeup in the bathroom. Um, so we are the station for opening day. This is where you want to turn to watch all of the previews. And you can also follow us on social media. We've been posting pictures. We've had a lot of guests up here in the WKYC suite already. So if you do want to follow us, you can go to WKYC.com. That's where we're going to have all of your coverage on Twitter. We are at WKYC. And while you're here and you're tweeting out your pictures of you all dressed up and you and your uh, right. with your friends and your tribe gear, use the hashtag three Indians. And Holly, you've been you've been out and about today. Well, I mean, let me just tell you, we were bar hopping a little bit earlier. <laughs> don't don't judge. We're not. But we've got a live look at East Fourth right now where I mean, it is just such a great sight to see 
so many out and about on this brisk, chilly, but sunny home opener. Yeah, East 4th is always a big one because you can walk straight down here. There's also some other bars that have been, they've, they've been hopping since early this morning. Some people are getting breakfast, getting the mimosas and Bloody Marys, and, and they're going to start the party uh, early. You'll see a little series coming up uh, from uh, the Thirsty Parent yeah. <laughs> a little bit later in the show. You know, it's one of those uh, unofficial holidays, yes. right? And we're so, so proud to be a part of and it. And having it be a Monday, I think a lot of people just extended their holiday or their their weekend, Russ, that they're right. just continuing the party. Russ, it's like Monday didn't exist this week. <laughs> <laughs> I think most people would prefer weeks like that, right? I think so. I think <laughs> these guys, as you said, they've been here right. since 4 o'clock this morning. Their makeup looks awesome. I bathroom was, makeup, I love it. I was just going to say that. Your makeup looks oh, fantastic. Well, the lights in the bathrooms here are amazing. <laughs> it must be really the, good. The, the dust from the french fries on my cheeks. You know what? It was the ice. The ice has preserved us since 3 uh, this morning. Preserved them. Uh, you guys are the, are the best. That okay. is so fun. We will see you both at the Great Lakes Brewery counter. How's yeah. that? Deal? <laughs> All right. Wonderful day. Open, opening day. Did you know Jimmy Donovan was going to start today for the Indians pitching? Did you oh, know that? that's yes. true. April Fool's. <laughs> He's really not somebody. It wasn't a great April Fool's joke, but had to get one in there at some point. We are counting oh. you down to the first pitch today. Yes, we are. <laughs> Stick with us on our Tribe Time opening day special right here on Channel 3. We'll be right back. For the students at Ohio Technical College. Let's go, Indians, baby. This is all you. Home opener flashback. The Indians and Twins, April 7th, 2006. Fifth inning and the bases loaded. Casey Blake hits a grand slam off Kyle Loesch. And the Indians win the game 11-6. Well, we are hopeful to see some celebrations just like that today here at Progressive Field as the home opener for the 2019 season gets underway later this afternoon. 
I'm Sarah Shookman here with Russ Mitchell down on the first baseline. It is a lovely day. Even the temperature, it doesn't tell the whole story as you're yeah, standing here. We cannot say it enough because we have been out here when it is not so <laughs> nice. But this is, is gorgeous. You're right. The sun makes it feels, warm. It feels like spring uh, as this first day of April is It underway. is amazing. And there's always something magical about the home opener. Yeah. And today is It's a no certain exception. kind of energy in downtown, I think. And, and it's mm. the another sign of spring to come, which we all, especially after a weekend like we just oh, had here in Northeast Ohio, we've right. all been waiting for. And, and speaking of that, we have a new meteorologist uh, <laughs> on staff here at Channel 3. You probably just got a taste of him a moment ago. Dave Chodowski is standing by live with him right now. David? <laughs> Guys, thank you. Yes, Carlos, I had no idea that uh, you had meteorologist written in your resume. You know what? <laughs> that was well done. All right, as you was trying to do something different. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I'll tell you, that was nicely done. Uh, Betsy could use the help, so we'll see what we can do on that. But All let's right. talk baseball now because weather I don't know much about. All right. But I do know about baseball, and I know that you guys have a rotation that is unbelievable. And no matter who you send out there, uh, it's looking like the best rotation in baseball after these first three games, huh? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Um, you know, uh, like a, people, a lot of people say it's one of the best uh, uh, – rotation in baseball but um you know it's the first three games so now back home here opening and here at home uh it's a lot of uh, fans they're gonna come to the game so we're really happy all right so you guys start out one and two coming out of spring training you lose a lot of guys so there's a lot yeah. of new guys here what's the feel of this team right now you know what it's still uh the same feeling you know uh like you said we lose a lot of guys we we, we got a lot of guys back too but I think uh, someone they're gonna step up and do the job. That, that's the same way they did. the other guys that left. But um, it's part it's part of the game. But right now we are good. So we 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 just waiting for a couple guys to come in back, too. But we're gonna be fine. Okay, let's talk about the home opener because I think sometimes fans forget that you are people, right? They they look at you guys. You make a lot of money. They just look at you as athletes. But you guys, you know, you're people and you think and you have human emotions. Okay, and you have pitched the home opener twice before. What's it like to be out there on the home opener to, to pitch and the excitement of the crowd? You know what? It's been uh, it's different. You know, I've been I've been playing on the big league for the last uh, seven eight years. Uh, but every time when we play here in home, the, the first game opening the season is unbelievable. It's way, way too different. It's kind of same uh, from, for the first game of the World Series, the same weight, the same feeling. But uh, today is a new day, so we're going to start a new season, start, um, you know, hard. And uh, we just came waiting for uh, first pitch today. How do you think Clevenger will do today? He's gonna be, he's gonna be great. He's been talking for the whole week. How are I gonna do? How are I gonna react? So just go out there and throw the ball. That's what you have to do. That's it. All right, Cookie. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll have our eyes open because no one plays more pranks, guys, <laughs> than this guy. If you're ever watching the games and you see that funny stuff going on, this is the guy behind it. I'm, I'm sure you're not surprised at that. After. Yeah, whatever, whatever <laughs> happened over there. If somebody do something else. They, they're just going to go, oh, that was cookie. <laughs> they're just so going to play it right away. <laughs> yes. That's right. All right, Carlos, thank you so right. much. Good thank luck you. this year. Uh, enjoyed having you on the show. All right, thank you. Guys, back to you. Wow, weatherman, prankster, star baseball He's the player. mastermind, apparently. He, he yes. does everything. Yeah, <laughs> nice guy, too. Want to talk Vegas odds now? Yeah, let's talk about it. As, you just, as we were just talking about, success measured this season by a World Series win. You heard it. That is right. Here are the odds from... Uh, Lost wages on the 2019 season. The New York Yankees, five to one to win the series. Houston Astros, six to one. Red Sox, 15 to two. Dodgers, eight to one. And the Indians, 10 to one. That seems good. Huh? You're in good company when That's you look right. at that group. We, it's been worse, certainly, <laughs> to say the least. Say it the has, least. and they're just odds. We're well, gonna defer, defy the odds this year, certainly. All right, so ahead. He is the man charged with getting the right players to make the Indians a contender on the field. We will sit down with general manager Mike Chernoff to talk inside baseball about how this team came together and what he's looking for in his players this season.
Welcome back to our Tribe Time opening day special. You are looking into Masthead Brewery here in downtown Cleveland. People have already begun. See a few brews, a few waters in there too as they're getting ready for our four o'clock first pitch over here at Progressive Field. Mike Chernoff joins me now, general manager of the Indians. So great to see you. Thanks for having us down here on the field today. Of course, it's an exciting day here. What is it like for you guys? Obviously, we know what it's like for so many of the fans. They, they've been up, they've been looking forward to this all, all for months since the last time you were playing. Uh, but what's it like for you? It's, it's the same for us. I mean, it is the beginning of the season. You're so optimistic about the future and what it holds for the year. Um, you know, it's a grind to get through the offseason. We've got a lot of work to do every offseason. Yes. You get through spring training just crossing your fingers, hoping everyone stays healthy. We've obviously had a couple of setbacks, but you look forward to the season and the optimism that goes with it. I think we're as excited as the fans are. Well, that's exciting to hear. I mean, it is a fresh start in so many ways. And as you mentioned, it was a busy offseason. You know, a lot of things happening during free agency and a lot of trades as well. Tell me about this team you've put together. Yeah, so we had two goals this offseason. First, contend in 2019. I mean, it is, we, we've got a, had a three-year window of winning division titles. We're mm -hmm. hoping to continue extending that. And 2019 is a big year. We feel like we have a great team in place. Want to make sure we can contend for a championship. Secondly, we had to try to, balance the future a little bit you know we needed to we knew that we were on a path that wasn't necessarily sustainable so we wanted to think about how do we infuse the young talent we see some of the guys out here Jake Bowers and Jordan Luplo and some of the young talent out here and put ourselves in a more sustainable place payroll wise to make sure that that window didn't ever close for us sure and as you said you're feeling optimistic as you look at 2019 I mean a lot of people we know what how exciting 2016 was around here but we didn't win it all I mean it what is just what defines success success for you this season, Mike? Winning the World Series. I mean, that is our goal, and we feel like, especially you look at the strength of our starting rotation. I mean, we're five deep. Each of those guys has continued to improve each year. So we feel really strongly about that group, along with a few other uh, really superstar-type position players, Jose Ramirez, Francisco Lindor, uh, Carlos Santana, who's back in a Tribe uniform, which is exciting. <laughs> it is. We feel like that's the type of team that can, can contend for a World Series, and that is the measurement of success in baseball. Now, you mentioned it as well, but uh, you're beginning the season with quite a few big names on the DL. Frankie Lindor being one of them, Jason Kipnis, Danny Salazar, and there are some others. Uh, how do you manage that? Do you have any idea on, on timeline or how, you, how hard it makes your job in the meantime as these guys are out? Well, you know you're going to fight adversity at some point in the season. Um, you know, in the past couple of years, we've had that towards the end, mm -hmm. right, with some of our starters getting knocked out right before the postseason. This year it's happening early, and you hope that we can get through that, grind through it, and get these guys back on the field uh, to hopefully have a successful year. The casual fan out there that opening day, of course, brings out. What are some names new to the team that they should be looking for this year? Well, I think a couple of really exciting young guys on the team. One is uh, Jake Bowers, who I mentioned before, guy we traded for from Tampa Bay last year. Young 23-year-old uh, left fielder and first baseman. Uh, sweet swing and bat. Uh, and we feel like he has a potential to be a middle-of-the-order type of bat for us. And then another one, homegrown talent, who everyone got to see a little bit of last year, Shane Bieber. I mean, Shane has taken tremendous strides uh, in his own development, even beyond what he did last year. So we're excited to see what this year can happen. Expecting have for him. big things for sure. Mike Chern off general manager thank you so much for your time absolutely great best of luck yeah you. good to see you too betsy's holding down the third baseline over there hi betsy hi sarah yeah it's a gorgeous uh, day over here a little cool over on that first base side but third base we're in the sun just beautiful right now all the seats are too and i have a fantastic view right over to that first baseline of the colleague companies club now if you've heard of the colleague companies i know you've heard of this guy matt colleague the founder and chairman of gosh colleague companies is leaf filter colleague capital colleague media what else do we have colleague racing racing we've what? got our colleague charitable giving programs yeah so yeah. the, the colleague racing that may be the last time you saw us together and we were totally yeah. upstaged by them firing up one of the race cars uh so it's That's a right. little quieter here it's way now. quieter <laughs> and it's beautiful and i love the green grass yep. and it's great being on the field and it's it's just the beginning of a wonderful season and yeah. the beginning of a new luxury club here at progressive field we've had the club seats up there before but yeah. the, the, you guys literally have completely redone it we've completely redone it so the colleague companies club it's a five thousand square foot 
uh, premium suite. Mm -hmm. It's the best experience in Cleveland sports. Actually, Major League Baseball has taken a look at it, and they're saying this might be the best experience in Major League Baseball. Wow. So it is awesome. It's complimentary drinks, complimentary uh, food, 150-seat uh, Sweet, yep, and it's uh, it's rock star. I can't wait. It's opening day. I can't even believe it. And it's it's going to be perfect. Now, yep. calling charities. Let's go into that because okay. you do a ton in the community, we and do. you're actually partnering with the Indians charities and all of this other stuff that's going on, which actually might be one of the the things that most people will get the most out of. Yeah. So we do a lot. Uh, we do a lot for charity, but we do a lot to highlight. You know what goes on. So we we have. It's part of what we're doing here uh, at, at Progressive Field and with the Indians is. To, um, is to get really more involved with their uh, their charities and charity experience. Um, it's almost something I can't talk about right now because right? there's a <laughs> lot of things in the work and what's going on. Yeah. Uh, but it's going to be big and it's going to be really highlighted in the community. And I'm telling you, the Cleveland Indians, I was just talking to a bunch of their executives yep. and it's amazing what they do uh, from a baseball perspective. Everybody knows we got this big stadium and the Cleveland Indians, but they do so much for the community so and charities much. that people don't even know about. Right. So we're going to try to help highlight that and help them out with that. Well, to, I can't to wait to know. hear more as, as the details become available to yeah. all all of us, of course, and of course, Matt is married to a Copley grad, Lisa, right. who was just a couple years ahead of me, so yep. it'll be fun to catch up with her a little bit today. That's what the ballpark is all about, seeing your old friends, right? Uh, I'm not sure where we're going. We're going to Jimmy, Sarah, Sarah, we're going back to you, my friend. <laughs> Thank you, Betsy. Yeah, it looks pretty swanky up in that new suite. I like it. <laughs> all right. Well, after the break, the last time the Midsummer Classic was in Cleveland, the Indians went to the World Series. Hmm. Might that be good news for things to come later in 2019? Well, after the break, we will go stargazing with Bobby D. Having been located. To believe me, to be the war of the crowd Waving my flag to the beating drum Fireworks blasted another home run So this room will root for the end Try to roll once again Says it's one, two, three strikes They're out at the old 
Big time, a little video from earlier today. The Indians out in the field playing a little soccer. A lot of fun out there. Whatever they can do to get warmed up, right? Totally. As we were saying earlier, <laughs> it's amazing that we're having this game today because the snow was covering this field. Not too long ago, this crew did a wonderful job getting things ready, not only for the game, but obviously for this challenging soccer game <laughs> as well. Just getting the competition going. Well, Bobby DeBasio joins us now. We were discussing what your actual title is, and we decided just to call you the mayor. The mayor. Oh, exactly. Thank you very yes. much. <laughs> senior Vice President, Public Affairs, and the senior part just got been around a while. <laughs> how, about Grand, how about Grand Puba? There you, like you go. One? I like that one, too. I like that one, too. I'll tell you, Brandon Kinky, our grounds crew chief, uh, what a remarkable job his crew as you were saying, Russ, oh. did to get this. Last night, they got all the snow off, so there was a, a sheet of ice, and you wouldn't even know. When I got here at 6.30 this morning, it was one of those, are we really going to be playing <laughs> on this field today? And we are. It is amazing. It, it is. is. Now, how many home openers is this for you, sir? 41. 41. In, wow. in Major League Baseball, wow. 40th with the Indians. There was a brief period that I was moved on to the Atlanta Braves as their PR chief for one year. And uh, um, so 40 uh, with the Tribe, 41 in baseball. So pretty wild. That's a special anniversary. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It goes by in a blink of an eye. <laughs> what is yeah. your favorite thing about the home opener? Well, the tradition. I think that's it. I mean, this is the 119th opening day. Uh, as a charter member of the American League. So just think about that. 119 years ago, people in Cleveland were getting fired up for the first game of baseball in yeah. town, and we've done it every year since. I mean, it's just absolutely remarkable. Every time we see you every year about this time, you are obviously so... so <laughs> Just I'm waving the guy. Waving the guy off. <laughs> We're <laughs> in the like middle of a scary. thoroughfare here. Yeah, That's exactly. Right. You, you, you get more excited, it seems, from year to year. What is it about opening day for you personally that means so much? Well, it, it, that another drama, the, the six-month drama that is so unique to baseball mm -hmm. uh, is what gravitates me towards this great game. No, nothing is like it. No other sport can do this on a daily basis like us. And today really gets it started that uh, for the next six months, as Tim Kirchin, one of the great sports uh, guys, uh, was a Baltimore uh, writer, um, now works at ESPN, said, no more meaningless nights for the next six, seven months. And that's absolutely uh, true. You filled up our schedule for sure. And in 2019, we have a very special honor as well to be yes. the All-Star Game here in Cleveland. Tell us about that. Yeah, it's going to be fun having the international spotlight on Cleveland once again with the All-Star Game. You know, it'll be the sixth time that the city of Cleveland is honored to play host to an All-Star Game. That is the most of any city in America that has only one baseball team. That's fantastic. Right that now, is. us and Cincinnati have both played host five times. And so in July, when we get it uh, for the sixth, uh, when that first <laughs> pitch is thrown, um, the record will be ours. And again, we cannot wait. Going through the um, history of the All-Star Game, my first one I worked on, 1981, there were five of us on the mm -hmm. committee. 1997, there were like 25 of us on the committee. <laughs> Over 40 Cleveland Indians employees are dedicating extra effort to make sure that the All-Star Game here is done perfectly. It's going to be a, a, a wonderful time. It's yes, all about it the will. fans, of course, and you take Absolutely. care of the fans. This year, what can the fans expect that they didn't have last year? Well, for the All-Star Game, baseball is so excited because their dream's coming true. Never before have they had Play Ball Park, which is an outdoor play area for the kids, and an indoor area in the convention center. Uh -huh. They've been in separate locations. Uh, for example, last year in D.C., Play Ball Park was down by the ballpark. The convention center's downtown D.C. This is the first time they're going to be right next door to each other. And when you're there, you guys, I'm telling you, you're going to say to yourself, I wish I was 12 again wow. because it is going to be awesome. So you, many fun things to do to come yes, down here Yes, Can you hook us up with, with yeah. tickets? I like think there'll be a way. <laughs> Absolutely. You know who to call. That's yeah. right. Bobby D. Thank right. you, guys. Thank Good to you see you. Very Appreciate much. it. Happy opening day. Happy, Happy opening day. <laughs> Happy New you. Year, as Happy you said. Happy New Year. <laughs> We're going to take a stroll down memory lane. Back in 1994, he opened Jake field on a high note. Wayne Kirby joins us before he tosses out the ceremonial first pitch today along with a fan favorite Sandy Alomar Jr. That's next.
Field first pitch between the Indians and Mariners. Wayne Kirby with the game-winning hit in the 11th inning for the Indians as they win 4-3. And welcome back, everybody. Opening day here at Progressive Field. And the gentleman that really started the magic of this ballpark, as you just saw in that piece of video, Wayne Kirby joins us here. It's great to see you. Well, thank you. Great to be here. Wasn't that an amazing day that day? <laughs> oh, that was, young kid right there? That young kid slapped that ball the other way, hey. which would make Charlie Manuel and the, all of the hitting coaches around baseball proud of you. Can you remember that day? That was a great moment here. Yeah, it was a 3-1 pitch. A free opportunity to swing. 3-1. close. Yeah. <laughs> slapped it into left field, and, I mean, it just topped off an amazing historic day here in Cleveland because the brand new ballpark was opening up and boy I'll tell you what what a day it was but it had a lot of twists and turns that day Sandy Alomar joins us here this afternoon too because he was a part of it too the Indians were being no hit that day by Randy Johnson and what inning did you finally get that hit seventh inning six seventh I inning I believe it was seven or eighth inning I think it was the seventh inning I Do you remember, eight, Wayne? Eighth. Eighth, 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 eighth. We were in the eighth inning, okay? Yep. And, uh, man, I'll tell you what, it was such an exciting day, but you never want to be no hit, but you don't want to be no hit on the day that you open up your brand-new ballpark, right? That's correct. <laughs> uh, I, I remember Randy was uh, nasty. You know, he, yeah, he, he was, was nasty. Smoke. Day, he yeah. was nasty, and uh, the background was not the greatest either. Uh, you know, it was just first game we played here, and uh, there was no uh, backdrop. You couldn't see his ball very well, but uh, he, he was having a remarkable day that day. Wayne, come on in here, because I want to tell you both the story uh, on that particular day, okay? Okay. Baseball history, nobody except Bob Feller had ever thrown a no-hitter on opening day. So we're here at the ballpark, and Bob Feller was sitting up in the press box. And let me tell you, he was very, very vocal, yelling at all of the Indians hitters, come on, get a hit, because he did not want to lose his record that day. I remember that. Yeah, he, I mean. Hey, trust me. He came down to the locker room after the game and started yelling out. I was like, hey, what happened? And finally, Sandy gets the hit. When you played here with the Indians, yeah. did you feel – kind of the magic here because you guys could be down seven runs going into the ninth inning and you'd score eight runs and win the game. There really was kind of a magic here. Well, one of our things was just to get on base. And um, Charlie didn't preach too much about walk. He preached um, get your pitch and hit it. And that's what we did. We didn't try to do too much. We knew the home run hitters. We knew the table setters. And we knew um, everybody in line of what they was capable of doing. So uh, we didn't panic. <laughs> no, they didn't panic, and you always came back. 1997, of course, was your big year, the All-Star game that year, and the Indians went all the way to the seventh game of the World Series. But you had a magical year that year. Anytime there was a big hit, you seemed to be the guy up at the plate. None may be bigger, I mean even bigger, than the, uh, than the All-Star home run, that home run against Mariano Rivera in game four of the series against the Yankees. Yeah, the, uh, the All-Star game was impressive. Uh, that, having an opportunity to come and play in your own ballpark yep. and have a chance to win the game and uh, delivering like that was uh, everybody's dream. Uh, I think it was uh, uh, an excellent night here in Cleveland, and hopefully somebody can do it this year. Hopefully we get a player that can do the same thing. Yeah. Guys, uh, I tell you what, it's uh, it's great seeing. What are you doing now, Wayne? Relaxing. <laughs> okay, all right. I, just... need, I needed a break. Hopefully one of these guys will jump start this season. Yeah. The get, That's get, what you need. Get a jump start. Stop this time of the year, right? We just can't wait eight innings to get a hit today. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it. Sandy, we're going to be seeing you all year long here on Channel 3. Thank you very much. Good luck yeah. today. Wayne, it's great seeing you. you that was too. a very, very historic day well, that a lot of people much. remember. It's great to have you back at the ballpark. Well, it's tough sitting on the bench that long and have to come up a hit. I know. I <laughs> tell you what. What? It was you know a long what? afternoon. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Well, thank you. Good to see you back. Always a member of the Indians. We're counting down. First pitch, 410, right here on Channel 3. When we come back, try uh, Tribe Tidbits with Maureen Kyle, Super Dave, Holly Strano. You're watching Tribe Time opening day here on Channel 3. This year's gonna be sweet. Go Tribe! because Cleveland rocks. It's just awesome to live in Cleveland. It's a melting pot of people and culture.
We are counting down to the home opener here at Progressive Field as the Indians and White Sox getting set to go at it at 410. First pitch right here on Channel 3, the 26th home opener in Progressive Field history. They have a winning record yep. at home, 119th all time. And do not adjust your television sets. <laughs> it is not 4 a.m. or 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. Or even 7 a.m. <laughs> That's right. No, it is in the middle of the afternoon. Yeah. Maureen Kyle, Dave Chodowski, Holly Strano, we are all ready to go. Well, you know what? It's because we can get the best seat in the house, at least for the very beginning of this game. We wouldn't miss opening day, right? No way. A lot no of way. other people don't either. I know. It's earlier a tradition. This, earlier this morning, snow on the field, Holly. Yeah. Gone. <laughs> yeah, right? As promised. Yeah. Sun yeah. shining. We have a lot of fun things to talk about here. Let's mm -hmm. start about this one here because this is an emotional one for Indians fans. Uh, the city will be remembering and honoring a Cleveland icon today on this opening day. The Rock Hall will pay tribute to Maurice Reedus Jr., also known as Cleveland Saxman. The downtown icon died last hey, April. Hey, he was hey. often heard playing in the Gateway District and other downtown spots before and after sporting events. Today, you'll hear his rendition of Take Me Out to the Ball Game coming out of the speakers scattered throughout downtown. It will be played every hour from 10 o'clock until 7 o'clock. So a very touching tribute. Yeah, today. that's one of those sounds that invokes so many memories and those are the type of memories you want to pass down to your children, right? So many of you bring your families here, your kids here. This is one of the most kid-friendly ballparks in the entire league, and that's because they have things like a nursing station for moms. I know I brought my newborn here last year when she was newborn, and it was a breeze. And then they also have the kids' clubhouse upstairs where kids have all of the step two toys. They're able to, to just play away while you can look out and watch the the ball game. There's the kids fan club. You can join 25 bucks. Kids get a swag bag. They earn points every time they come here to a game. They rack up those points. They can trade them in to do a meet and greet with some of the ball players or also the uh, the kids starting lineup that we host on Sundays Such where they get favorite. to run the bases and then meet a baseball player, whichever one, you know, if they're the pitcher, they get to meet the pitcher that day. Yeah. My favorite memories at this ballpark all involve my children. Yeah. yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. oh. So we'd love to hear from you. Speaking of, you know, your kids and your memories on social media today. Of course, we're at WKYC on Twitter. You can find us on Instagram, on Facebook. Make sure to use the hashtag 3 Indians. And we've already tweeted out our lunch for the day, which right. is just potato chips and fries. The oh, you've had lunch. <laughs> oh, Dave, lucky you. Calories don't count on the home opener. Don't <laughs> worry. Did you know that? We saved you a know couple what? hot dogs. I do know that. And I think I'm going to indulge here in a few moments good. because yeah. there good. is so much good food here. I mean, I'll tell you what, they keep adding every year. Yes. So it's so good. We got the sneak peek. <laughs> See, I told you, we don't miss this. Yeah, right. Best right. seat in the house. All right. Well, that was fun. And we'll keep this show going. And uh, don't forget to watch us again uh, tomorrow morning. But we have yeah. plenty more to come here as we count down to the home opener between the White Sox and the Indians. Now, he made headlines for speaking the truth when it comes to not committing to a massive contract for one of his star players. After the break, Jimmy Donovan talks with Indians owner Paul Dolan about the decision and the future of the team.
American League Central Division champions and welcome back to Progressive Field where the last time we saw our Indians here we were watching them get knocked out of the playoffs by the Houston Astros who completed a three game sweep in the American League Division Series and believe me that still stings today. But this is a new season and with that it brings new expectations and that's the best part about opening day and baseball. We wipe the slate clean. This year's Indians team is loaded again. Pitching. Hitting. Defense. More pitching. Those are the key ingredients when you're trying to win a championship. So is this year's team for real. The long journey to October starts today. Enjoy it. Enjoy every game along the way. It should be a fun ride. Happy opening day everybody right here on Channel 3. Closer to opening day, the home opener happening here at Progressive Field. The gate's about to open and fans ready to flock in on really an amazing day when you consider what kind of weekend we had. Saturday rain, Sunday snow, Monday sunny skies, and the Indians and White Sox a little after 4 o'clock. All the action right here on Channel 3. Tribe time opening day rolls along. Paul Dolan joins us. Happy opening day here. Well, thank you. I tell you what, yesterday I'm saying to myself, this looks like 2007. Remember that, well, Indians Mariners? Snow on opening day is a good sign. So, yeah. the, so we won the we division see, that year, We seem to right? do well. I think we've had a couple other snow years that turned out to be pretty good at the end. So. Well, I tell you, your ground screw did an amazing job. Isn't it amazing? This. Yeah, it looks like midsummer out here. Yeah, it looks like July. Does not feel like Doesn't July, feel but like it yeah, looks no, like no, July. No. All right, you had quite a week last week. All right, we can did. we talk about that? Sure. Let's talk about it. You you did a couple of interviews, uh, and some people got very very upset or worried. Uh, about your forecast of the Francisco ah. Lindor situation. Clarify, or at least in your mind, basically what you were saying, because I, I'll be, I'm going to give you a little pregame show. I, I thought you kind of dealt with reality. Well, I mean, I was dealing with the reality at the time because we were talking about $300, $400 million contracts. Which there were three of them yes. and, and, yeah. you know, and, in and, a week. And, and the reality is that Lindor right now is projected to be that kind of talent. So that's a challenge for, for us. Yes. We love him. He's one of the best players of all time. We've got him for three more years. We will try. We will look for ways that, that maybe he can stay a Cleveland Indian, but that, that will be a significant challenge. You know, he, he's suffering for the first time in a little bit of a setback. Maybe that changes his mindset a little bit. I don't know. But the, I mean, the real point I'm trying to make is we have three years of one of the greatest talents of the game to watch and enjoy. And then we'll see what happens after that. You know, in my um, turbulent medical history, doctors said to me a number of times, don't freak out until it's freak out time. Okay? <laughs> I, I want you to remember that. Right, right. And maybe everybody out right, there, don't right, freak right. out until it's freak out time. Okay, let's deal with this. When you saw the $300 million contracts that Harper got, uh, you know, Machado got, and then the $430 million that Trout got, what do you say as an owner of the Cleveland Indians in this market? Well, I mean, that's just something not only I – mean, I can't say we can't do it. We can do it, but you, but you can't build a championship team around that kind of contract, particularly if it's not performing. And when you talk about 10 to 12 to 13-year contracts, you know, the reality is that most of these guys don't perform in the latter half of those contracts. So. We, we're trying to build championship teams not only now, but we look forward a number of years. And when you lock up all that payroll in one guy, you really, really make it difficult to build winning teams. Now, let's face it. The last couple of years, you really went for it, right? I mean, Andrew Miller. I mean, Donaldson and Jay Bruce. I mean, you really went for it. We, we definitely did. And, and the reality, which I know is not really maybe accepted, is we're going for it now. Right. We may have taken a little bit of our foot off the gas because we couldn't sustain the pace. And we're trying, and we're looking longer term, but we're still going for it, uh, and because we do have a chance to win it all this year. Well, I mean, a very favorable situation in the division, right. and when you can roll out that starting rotation, right. 
you're in a good way, right? And when we get some of these young guys back, like our Francisco Lindor, yeah. and if Kipnis comes back and becomes Kipnis, and a young man like Zimmer comes back and ends up being a, um, the star we hope he can be, and if Carlos Gonzalez can be the star he's been, right. we're in a pretty good spot. Before we go, your excitement as the summer builds towards July and the yeah. All-Star yeah. Game. Well, it's a, it's a great thing for the community. It's a unique thing for the franchise. You know, you know, We've owned the team for 20 years, and we'll own it for a long time afterwards. But this might be the only time we ever actually have an All-Star Game here, and I'm really look, looking forward to that. Paul, thanks for coming on. Great. All right. The Indians take on the White Sox today. When we come back, this ballpark has seen amazing moments. Joy, some heartbreak, too. I mean, that's in the life of any facility that houses a sports team. And we'll introduce our newest member of our Channel 3 sports team when we come back on Tribe Time opening day here on Channel 3. Get more enjoyment. Remember this Indians home opener? The Indians and Mariners on April 6, 2007. Snowflakes were flying before the game. Then the game goes on and the Indians have a 4-0 lead when Seattle's Jose Lopez says he can't see because of the snow. Mariners manager Mike Hargrove complains and the game is called with Paul Byrd pitching a no-hitter. Oh, that Mike Hargrove, that crafty Mike Hargrove, one strike away from a no-hitter, and the game got snowed out. Here's a look at Progressive Field 2019 as we get ready to go. Sellout crowd today, and they have begun to file through the gates. The Indians and White Sox a little bit after 4 o'clock. You can see it all right here on Channel 3. Welcome back in, everybody. You know what? After every Indians game, I would get in my car, drive home, try and call up Nick Camino on WTAM, and I could never get through. I never get it through. The lines were so busy. So the only way we got a chance to 
get him and I get a chance to talk to him <laughs> is we hired him, and here he is. <laughs> welcome in. Welcome Jim, to Channel 3, Nick. It's great to be here uh, joining an all-star team. So excited. Now you got through. So here we go. I got through. We're ready to go. <laughs> yeah. All right. You, for years, you have sat at this ballpark, and you have watched the good, the bad, the ugly, whatever, uh, the exciting, and so you have a perfect vantage point for us to kind of go through the history of this ballpark. Yeah, I mean, you look at this year, the fact that they're hosting an all-star game in 2019 is amazing when you think about what they have done to keep this place up, the renovations and all that, but there's been some great memories here, some a little crazy, <laughs> but also some great times. We take a look at those. It goes by many names, like the Jake and Progressive Field, but no matter what you call it, the ballpark the Indians call home has seen its share of joy and pain in its 25 years anchoring the Gateway District. In 1994, Jacobs Field was christened by President Bill Clinton, who threw out the first pitch before the Indians beat Seattle in extra innings, but that season was cut short thanks to a player's strike. When play resumed in 1995, Jacobs Field got its first taste of October baseball as the Indians made it to the World Series. Uh, you know, in 95, we went to the World Series, and uh, I think everybody remembers how devastated that was when we lost. But just the fact that we were there, um, just uh, uh, a great accomplishment for everybody because we were, like, coming really hard in 94. In their time at Progressive Field, the Indians have won 10 division titles, hosted a playoff series in 11 seasons, adding World Series runs in 1997 and 2016. Players say it's the excitement of a new field that brought in the fans who helped spark that early success. We jumped to the new stadium. And I think the excitement for the, the city of Cleveland just kind of took off. Mm -hmm. And I think Cleveland, I always tell people, is one of the best fans in any city because of the, the the commitment that the fans put on the sports. The fans showed their commitment to the team and the park, selling out 455 consecutive home games between 1995 and 2001, while also packing the stands for parts of 2017's record-breaking 22-game win streak. It's the greatest fans. When you win, they're there. When you lose, they're still there, but when you really win, Everybody comes out and, and, be, and try to be a part of it. The park has also seen its host of bizarre, incredible, and heartbreaking moments, like Game 2 of the 2007 ALDS when millions of midges decided to crash the game, or when a flock of gulls made their home in the outfield grass, or a freak November rain shower that ended the Indians' 2016 World Series hopes and the Cubs' 108-year championship drought all at the same time. Here's to all the memories and hopes of a quarter century more. So you look at that, Jim, I mean, amazing memories here, some weird memories, yeah. but mostly some great when you think about the 90s and all of that, for sure. No, uh, we were just conversing as we went down, you know, memory lane with uh, Nick through his piece there on that opening day against the Seattle Mariners, Nick Camino, second grade, probably wow. getting ready for his first Holy Communion <laughs> at this time. That's probably true. <laughs> That's probably you guys. How old were you? I said, I don't want to tell you. <laughs> Uh, I wasn't. I was actually here. <laughs> a lot of great to have you. Jim, it's great to be here. Good I for you it. and you good for great. us, too. Nick Camino joining us here at WKYC and Channel 3 Sports. When we come back, we'll talk food and all the new things at Progressive Field as we roll along with Tribe Time opening day.
East 4th Street <laughs> on a glorious <laughs> Monday afternoon, the home opener. It's like this every Monday then, day, about 2 in the afternoon yeah. on East 4th, right? Absolutely. <laughs> they just have the energy for a new week, a new month, oh, yeah. April 1st, and certainly for a new season as it begins here. We are over on the first baseline at Progressive Field, and it's turning into quite a lovely day. It is a lovely day. Started off rocking the scarf. You got the hat. You could probably take this off pretty soon because We're it's nice. We're going to delayer, you yes. know, at some point, as I'm sure those folks are as they load up on maybe a few beers, uh, a couple cocktails to get ready. Something like that. We'll, we'll, we'll be a little present about that certainly <laughs> there is all sorts of new stuff going on at the ballpark this year yes there is as we're getting ready for a new season will uick joins us up in the wkyc suite with some of those new things will what can you tell us yeah, Sarah, basically every year people know some changes get made to the ballpark, some of them very drastic, some of them smaller things, maybe just adding a food item. But each and every year as fans come into Progressive Field for the first time, they can expect something new. The home opener is a special day every spring in Cleveland. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Progressive Field. The promise of drama and the allure of possibilities. As we're ready to start another season of baseball. But also the new. Biggest renovation we've had in the club lounge. <laughs> really hadn't been touched since 1994. The Cleveland Indians welcome in a new season of baseball at Progressive Field with a renovated club lounge. Took the bar out, it's all one level. Uh, floor to ceiling windows that slide open. Really, really cool open social atmosphere. New merch. And with the All-Star game, obviously, a ton of new merchandise coming our way. So we even have a pop-up tent out in right field. It's going to be the world's largest uh, All-Star game headquarters that you can find. And then on top of that, just all the new player gear, new red jersey, the new blue jersey. And some unique new dishes. So this year, uh, we wanted to really focus on Cleveland. We're really passionate about our city, and we wanted to make sure that we still represent our local Partners, so we're standing next to Cleveland Kraut. If you're into spicy, I'm very excited about the fat roots here. Bring it here to Cleveland, I'm really proud of that. Food they're hoping will keep your taste buds guessing and satisfied for a season they're planning on going late into the month of October. Looking at a playoff run or even the All-Star game that's coming here and having the opportunity to be on the world stage, it really pushes our chef. And I think that those playoff runs really give us that opportunity to be on that stage. A couple of personal ideas in here to interject a little bit. That spicy chicken sandwich is spicy. Be careful. Maybe have a glass of milk ready to go. Crowd dog, very good as well. Now, I did press to see if I could get a little bit more detail on exactly what the all-star game plan was. What I was able to find out is they're planning, it's very secretive, but they're planning some sort of open concept, Betsy, to bring a lot of different foods from different regions, maybe exposing some Clevelanders and some other people to some foods that they're not used to seeing for the all-star game coming up here in a few months. It's all good. I don't think you can go wrong with any of it. As a matter of fact, as soon as I heard your voice say food at the ballpark, I began to smell amazing things, and it is just fantastic. The wind is swirling inside Progressive Field right now, so we have this wonderful mix of all the different varieties of food, and it just smells amazing. And the wind is going to be a little tiny bit of a factor as far as the wind chills go. Our air temperatures right now are in the 30s here in Northeast Ohio. Specifically, we're in the mid-30s here in downtown Cleveland. Wind is still slightly blowing out according to the flags, but I think that will be very changeable. The lake is going to start to have an impact here and we'll probably pick up a bit of a more northerly breeze as the game goes on. You can see the snow on the ground in the visible satellite picture. If it's not moving, that's snow, believe it or not, and that snow uh, will be fading away quickly as we go through the afternoon thanks to our spring sun that is going on. And as far as the rest of the afternoon uh, goes for the forecast, temperatures are generally going to stay in the 30s to right around 40. We'll continue to see these beautiful sunny skies, although I do see a few little poofy clouds just to the south of the ballpark at this point. Uh, but I've been watching the blimp go by. There's planes flying around, so it's just a beautiful day all in all. And I can tell you it's because of high pressure that is in control. High pressure just so happens to be one of the all-stars of our weather edge.
Education Day that is going to be coming up on May 22nd of this year. This is an annual event between us and the Indians, and we basically put on a one-hour weather program for thousands of kids who get out of school for a fantastic field trip. They come downtown in the morning, take in that hour-long weather program that's all based on weather and baseball, and then they get to stay and watch the game. Now we just have to get the weather to look like this. Maybe it'll be a little bit warmer for that day, and it'll all be good. Russ and Sarah, one thing I want to tell people, even though the temperatures are cool, remember to use your sunscreen because the spring sun is definitely getting stronger, and you can totally get a sunburn on a day like this. You don't even realize it's going on. Back to you guys. Great advice. There is nothing veiled about this sunshine. Am I right, Betsy? <laughs> no, it's straight up blue skies overhead. We like it. I All know right. that's your favorite, but this is okay too, this is, right? You know what? Yeah. <laughs> this trumps that. How's All that? Right. <laughs> Thank you, Betsy. Coming up, how well do you know your tribe trivia? Well, Channel 3's Holly Strano put some fans to the test when we return. From all the guys here at Mother's Tiger on 80 seconds period, we want to wish the Cleveland Indians good luck. Go And we're back on Tribe Time opening day. Dave Chodowski along with Holly Strano. Holly, we know fans love getting ready for the home opener. They like to party, and you were out with them this morning. I mean, they were out really early, right? So we put them to the test. Let's see how they did. What Indians player was the first to hit 50 home runs in a single season? Albert Bell. Yes! Free tickets! <laughs> We're one for one. Who did the Indians beat in the American League Championship Series in 2016? Dance while you wait. Uh, Shane, you got to dance while you're thinking. There you go. Keeps us warm because it's so cold today. Boston. No. It was the Toronto Blue Jays. But you're so nice, you still get free tickets. What Indians pitcher threw the last perfect game in team history? Parker? Bingo! For some reason, there are people outside of this bar. Bit of a mystery.
history to me, but. All right. It's like a holiday, it right? Is. Yeah. Yeah. It's a holiday. It's a holiday. I sent a meme to my boss and said it was a religious holiday. And I was off. <laughs> yeah. All right, Kim, you ready to play some trivia? Uh -oh. Yes. You got this, girl. You got it. Ready? Yes. All right, the Indians retired the number 19 first in team history. Who Mom did that? Feller. Yes. Mom Feller. That's free tickets. Here we go. The Indians have won two World Series championships. Name one of the years. Boom! Free ticket. What Indians player was the last to win a gold glove in team history? It's gotta be Frankie, right? Frankie Lindor? That's free, that's free tickets! Go try. Go try. We're all winners today. Yes! They did good. They did. Boy, you had a good time. <laughs> I did. You know what? You could put me in a cardboard box and I'd have a good time, Dave. That's a good point, yeah. Imagine being a fan and getting ready for the home opener and you have a chance to go to another game. Right? That's awesome. So exciting. Right. So good to see all those smiles. All right, Holly, thanks. Fun times, no doubt. But mm -hmm. speaking of fun times, what a great time it is right now in Cleveland sports. I mean, Tribe fans enjoying another run at trying to win a World Series while the excitement builds for the Browns, Bud Shaw joins Jimmy to toast the town. Welcome back, everybody, as the fans are filing in on what is not too shabby a day at all here at Progressive Field. The Indians take on the White Sox here in the home opener. They both come in at records of one and two in the early part of the season. Jim Donovan back with you. Happy to be with Bud Shaw from WKYC.com. I didn't know yesterday if we would have baseball here. Yeah, I'll tell you, the next time I criticize uh, players for not performing <laughs> well in cold weather, 
they should remember how I'm dressed <laughs> for this op opening day. All right, the Indians did not perform well in cold weather over the weekend, mm -hmm. or the Indians, where a lot of people look at them objectively and say they're going to struggle offensively, and they certainly did over the weekend. Now, minus Lindor, minus Kipnis, and I don't know if Jose Ramirez is really 100% after that ball banging off that knee, but there are some concerns about that offense. Yeah, I mean, last year at this time, uh, Michael Brantley, after missing the first five or six games, was already coming back into the lineup, and you felt a little bit of uh, relief because of that. You know, as they open the season today, Jim, uh, I, if I'm not mistaken, Frankie Lindor's in Green Bay getting the dreaded second opinion. So if he's out for a length of time, it's just going to uh, um, exacerbate the issue of, of how many runs they're going to be able to score on a nightly basis. From the time that story broke last week, that he had tweaked an ankle in a rundown in a minor league game but was feeling great, and he walked off the field and he looked fine to suddenly second opinion in Green Bay with a well-known doctor there that will take a look at that. I don't know. They, um, I think people are perplexed. Yeah, and, you know, this is not a lineup that can sustain a loss like that. Um, it's already fairly thin when you get past the five spot in this order. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot back there to, to intimidate opposing pitchers. Without him in the lineup, we've seen what's happened. We've seen Tyler Naquin in the third spot with six strikeouts and seven at-bats. They have to find an answer. So, Paul Dolan was here just a little while ago, but Paul Dolan was really in the news last week. A couple of interviews that he did. The quote that came out was, enjoy Francisco Lindor. The implication is, enjoy him while we have him. We have him under control for three more years, but we're probably not going to be able to sign him. Mm -hmm. I took it that it was a little bit of reality. Yeah, I, I don't think they can sign him. I did too, and I think most people, if they take a step back, see why that's the case. The contracts that are being signed are $400 million. Um, they're not going to do that in this market. I'm not sure it was smart for San Diego to do it with Machado in their market. But I think what's gotten the ownership in, in trouble a little bit with the fan base is that on the other side of it, while they have Lindor, they're clearly cutting salary and trying to correct the payroll from the last few years. So it feels like to fans that they're not building around Lindor and Ramirez while they have them. So they cut $15 million off the payroll this year just to put a number to what Bud said. Now, where are they? They can win the division, can't they? Yeah, sure. And and I think in and you look at team payroll, I think they ranked 18th last year. I think they may only rank 19th or 20th this year. So it's not like they, they've fallen off the map in that regard. Um, this is a division I think that's going to be tough because of the Minnesota Twins, but not because of anybody else. Is it going to be tough for the Indians with the Browns becoming relevant in the middle of the summer? I would like to think that people here could... Uh, enjoy the Browns and enjoy the Indians at the same time if they're winning, but that's going to be a big thing. They have a big event coming up, a showcase with the All-Star Game, right. and I think they need to be a real relevant team at that point. But as always, thanks very much. Thanks, Jim. Bud Shaw from WKYC.com and now time for our player to watch today, and that's brought to you by Velisano 100% supports life-saving cancer research at Cleveland Clinic. Mike Clevenger on the mound. Mike Clevenger was on the mound last when we gathered here at Progressive Field in October against the Astros, and even though the Indians lost that day, it wasn't on Mike Clevenger. He had nine strikeouts in that game before the Indians' bullpen kind of torched, and they ended up losing game three, but he's a part of that outstanding Indians rotation, and he gets his first crack at it here this afternoon. Look for a lot of strikeouts if Mike Clevenger is the Mike Clevenger that we watched here last year. Now over to the first base side, over to the third base side, rather, around the horn we go. I'm all turned around here, Betsy. I'm left-handed, <laughs> that's why. And Betsy He's got much more on Velisano and the great work they do. That's right. In baseball, Jimmy, if you're turning right, it's bad. So don't do that. Uh, as far as the day goes, it's beautiful. Great to be here at the ballpark. But, you know, it would be a great day to take a bike ride, too. And that's kind of what we're starting to think about. The Velisano ride is coming up for the Cleveland Clinic Cancer Research. Tons of money raised, and the Cleveland Indians play a pivotal role in that. As a matter of fact, the 10K this year is going to be called the Tribe Ride. We'll hear more about that in a moment. But let me introduce this guy, Bart Swain. I call him the guy Wrangler. He says he's a firefighter, <laughs> uh, but he is the director of baseball information for the Indians. You're basically the liaison between us and the players and Tito and all that. And so you get all kinds of drama to that's deal with. The, uh, <laughs> I would say that's a good way to put it. I'm, I'm the go-between. <laughs> yeah, go I handle the, uh, put out the uh, fires <laughs> yes. and, and uh, promote the cause. Absolutely. Well, you've got your bike with you. You are a, a captain of the team, if I'm yeah. understanding things right, for the team Velisano for the Indians. Tell us about the rides this year and in the, the role that the Indians play in it. Well, I would say that when I say promote the cause of the Indians, this is a bigger cause than the Indians. This uh -huh. is uh, 
you know, having, uh, you know, the charity ride, the Velisano, everything going to cancer research. Uh, this is this is really why I do what I do because this is I'm so passionate about this. Uh, Velisano Six is coming up. There's a, a variety of distances for whatever level of bike you are. Um, so you can do 200 miles or like you said, the 10 mile 200 ride. 200 miles, yeah. really, really. Yeah. There are people that do 200 That's miles. That's a little above my level. Uh, <laughs> I was like, what level? is this? But the 10K is going to be the tribe ride. Tell yes. us how people can get involved with that. So uh, just go to velisano.org slash tribe ride. Okay. And the centerpiece of that ride is uh, is going to be a uh, lap around Progressive Field. No kidding. So, so do they get to come down through the tunnel? They come down through the ramp. Up oh, on the my goodness. That's the, like, super secret oh, ramp yeah. nobody ever gets to see. Make sure you use your brakes down that Yeah, ramp. that would be important for and sure. And then uh, come on down and take a ride around the track. And then so. you have to go back up that ramp. Yeah. I hate to tell you, <laughs> there's going to be some walkers coming up there. Well, you need there. some gears for yeah, that. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Well, thank you it's so much. It's a great much. cause. Um, our New Jersey's coming out here soon. Design by Sandy Alomar. Oh, how exciting. And we had 100 people on our team last year. Well, we so. need to do better than that, and I'm sure you folks are going to be able to join in on that for sure. Jimmy, we need to get you on a bike. I think that'd be kind of cool. I do, too. I mean, five Tour de France is you're right. I should well, get back true. on the bike. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Betsy. Thank you, you to Bart you. Swain. There's something else going on today, and it's out in Berea. You've been wondering, when does Odell Beckham Jr. hit town? He has arrived. He is with the Browns today. He is with them right now, in fact. Let's get his reaction to what it was like when he heard the news he was traded from the Giants to the Browns. Here's Odell Beckham Jr. Junior. It's hard to explain. I can't even put it into words. Um, I was heading to dinner, and I remember just seeing uh, Gettleman calling, and I knew something was going down. And I picked up the phone, you know, took the call. All right, was quiet for a minute at dinner, and it just was. It just is a lot. Uh, I don't even know how else to describe it, but it's just a lot. A lot of emotions, a lot of thoughts, you know, that run through your mind. Your whole life's changing. It's still the same in theory, but it's changing. Boy, I'll tell you what, it has just begun, but it is here. Odell Beckham Jr. joining the Cleveland Browns on the first day of their off-season conditioning program. Hey, when the Browns win the toss this year with that offense that they're getting ready to put out on the field, take the ball, okay? Stop kicking off. Take the ball. We want to see them score as many points as they possibly can, and they've got all the weapons to do it. When we come back, Chief Wahoo, the long history of the Chief here with the Cleveland Indians, and we continue right after this time on. Having been located
And welcome back as we look around the ballpark. The gates open at 2 o'clock today. There's a fan right there. <laughs> Sporting the Block C, waiting for <laughs> opening day 2019 to get underway. Fans in all various states of dress here. Some of them look like they're ready to go skiing. Others ready look like they could maybe, I haven't seen shorts yet, so we won't go that we far. We won't go but, that far yet. But almost <laughs> spring-like weather. But what you are not seeing, at least on the field this year, will be Chief Wahoo. That is correct. Dave Shadowski has been looking into that, giving us some perspective. He is up in Suite 150 to tell us about it. Hey, David. Guys, hello. Yes, today we officially say goodbye to the Chief. Well, kind of. You won't see him on the uniforms, but you're still going to see Chief Wahoo inside Progressive Field. But as far as it being gone on the uniforms, this is a day a lot of people have waited for, but many more not so happy about. For so many Indians fans, he was the symbol of the franchise. I will never forget as a boy, riding in the car with my dad on the shoreway and seeing the giant Chief Wahoo above Gate D, the excitement through the roof. It was baseball time. I didn't think it was offensive. I was a kid. Many look at it that way. So many more people do not. Since his introduction in 1947, we've seen many different versions of the Chief, but no more. The writing was on the wall over the last five years as the Block C became the primary logo and Rob Manfred became MLB commissioner. He wanted the historic tribe logo gone. Much different than his predecessor, Bud Selig left the fate of Chief Wahoo up to the team. In 2016, while the Indians played the Blue Jays in the ALCS, an activist tried to get the Indians' name and logo banned. A Canadian judge rejected the request and dismissed the case. But on to the World Series and national spotlight. Thus, more conversation, more fuel to the fire for Manfred. And two years later, in 2018, boom! It's official, 2019 would be the end. The news announced one year after learning Cleveland would host the 2019 All-Star Game. We can connect all the dots we want. Why would the Dolans agree? Manfred pushed, wanting a culture of diversity and inclusion throughout the game. While you will not see the Chief on the field anymore, he's no longer the logo, the team will still sell merchandise with him on it to maintain control of the trademark. Those that wanted him off the uniforms are the ones smiling today. But are they completely satisfied? No. You will still see the logo they despise inside Progressive Field. Not on the players, but the fans. Many have a long-standing attachment to the Chief. He will still be the symbol for them. And as I sit here today, I wonder if when it's all said and done, you're going to see more of the Chief, perhaps Tribe fans that still want the logo, kind of protesting on their own, seeing more of it here in the ballpark. I've seen a lot of it already. We'll see how that goes, Russ and Sarah. As we will. Thank you very much, Dave. Well, when it comes to sports, there are few who have been on the beat quite as long as Paul Points. After the break, he joins us to discuss the team as he begins his 37th season. We'll be right back.
LSU on a glorious Monday in Cleveland, Ohio. Almost time, guys. That's right. Game time coming up, and the fans are piling into Progressive Field here, getting ready as hope springs eternal for this new season. Yeah, it really does. Remember, they are an unmade bed right now. This is not the way they're going to look, hopefully. In a couple of weeks, we'll have Francisco Lindor back. So enjoy him, as one great owner said. Oh. And, uh, you know, Jason Kipnis will come back. But what happened over the weekend, I mean, that was just kind of a Band-Aid over right. a lineup that's probably going to struggle a little bit more to score runs this year than in the past. But when it's put together, they should be okay. You're optimistic. Yeah. I am optimistic. There is one final thought that I have on this opening day. Sarah, I really want my hat back. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for letting me borrow it. <laughs> well, it's a great day today. You really have two teams that are kind of in the same position. The Chicago White Sox, a really young team, but the Indians realize these other teams, like the White Sox, the Tigers, the Royals, the other teams in the division, the Twins certainly, you know, they're getting closer to them. Yeah. So if you're going to do it, you got to do it now. Wow. Anybody is, particularly you're going to watch? Well, I'm definitely going to watch Mike Clevenger today because the Indians pitching is startling. Al Pulowski and Jensen Lewis, That's they're right. in the bullpen, ready to go. That's right. Game time at 4 o'clock. Thank you so much for joining us today. Play ball. <laughs> Enjoy opening day 2019. Choosing between the next level or the next episode? Make it easy.